Welcome everyone to Jack Plotnick's acting workshop. Um, my approach to acting is a joyful, selfish, non-controlling, non-result oriented approach to acting that I believe books more work. And I can say that because this is how I've always approached my, my uh, acting here in Los Angeles. And I book a lot of work. And I only share that because in my opinion, there's a lot of actors who are going to film acting teachers who I consider to be fear-based and result-oriented. And in these classes, these actors pay money to, for all these result-oriented techniques. And then later I meet those actors and they say that they're not booking work the way they used to when they before they took the class and they don't even really enjoy acting anymore. And that, that person they're going to and paying for these techniques isn't even a working actor. So it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, my favorite quote in terms of teaching film acting is from, um, oh, I forget his name, but he was nominated for lead actor for an Oscar for the, the movie Nixon. And they were interviewing him and he said, the best advice you can give actors is how to get out of your own way. And I love that because you'll notice he didn't say like is to study Meisner or something. No, he said, help actors get out of their own way and, and the reason why that's the most important thing is because the acting part's really easy. Like really, e it's very easy to act on film because film acting is just behaving as if it's really happening. And that's just called playing pretend, which you've always known how to play pretend since you were a kid and there's no right way to play pretend. And a lot of our favorite film actors never trained at all. You know, Jennifer Lawrence has been nominated for so many Oscars. She never trained uh, as an adult film actor. She, a friend of mine um, knew her as a, and he, he did a, a film with her and he asked her why she didn't train. And she said she, when she was 14, she met a teacher in New York who told her she, there was nothing she needed to know and she believed him. So I think we, can, we should all treat ourselves with that kind of respect. If you want to train as an actor, go ahead, especially theater actors really must get training. But if you, uh, with film acting, just make sure that the teacher is putting out a message that the acting part's easy. And uh, the more you act, the better you get at it. You don't need someone telling you why you're doing it wrong. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the issue uh, and the reason why a lot of actors get caught in uh, classes for long periods of time is that they think acting should be comfortable. And that's, that's the big truth is it's never going to be comfortable and it's not supposed to. So acting is really easy and it's really uncomfortable to do. That's called exciting, you know, but people go, well, that's scary. And it's only scary if you have a reality where you could fail in your scene work. But the truth is in art, you can't fail. You're just making art. So there's no way to do it wrong. And, and if you're curious how to have a reality where there's no such thing as failure in your acting, just read the last chapter of my free ebook, which is uh, at this link. Uh, the the, the ebook is called New Thoughts for Actors and everything I teach uh, is in it. And the last chapter is how to have a reality where there's no such thing as failure. So you'll understand that um, however the scene goes, it was meant to go and you're free to play and enjoy the uncomfortableness instead of making it something you think you have to get rid of with these result-oriented techniques that are just going to make everybody watching it uh, bored. <laughs> so uh, the way that we get out of our way is we have to understand that that feeling of anxiety that we used to call nervous, that feeling of anxiety is caused by a thought. Every feeling is caused by a thought. And every negative feeling is caused by our ego. Your ego is the half of you that wants you to fail. And we'll just say whatever it can think of to ruin your experience. So in an audition waiting room, it says things like, you're not right for this part. You're not going to book this job. You're not a very good actor. So you've got to get control of that voice. That's how we get out of our way, right? So uh, to get control of the voice, I recommend that you move it outside your head and see it as a vulture squawking on your shoulder. And now you can say what you need to say to your vulture to let it know, oh, I I'm not interested in discussing this right now. I'm acting. Right. So we got to get our vulture to shut up. Uh, and and uh, usually that comes in the form of letting it know that whatever it thinks you need, you don't. It's very important to understand that need is fear based. 
Want is a great thing. I hope you guys want every job you go out for. I hope that you want a huge career, but need is no good because need means, uh, it, it just causes anxiety. It means, oh my God, I'm no good without this. And I know the way my life is supposed to go. And if it doesn't go that way, then I'm a failure. So when your vulture says, you're, you're gonna do a bad job today. You don't say, no, I'm gonna do a great job today because your vulture, the half of you that wants you to fail will just go, no, you're gonna do a bad job. So you say, I release and destroy my need to be good in the scene today. And your vulture goes, yeah, but you're not gonna be. Wait, what? I said, I release and destroy my need to be any good in this. I don't fucking care. And then your vulture shuts up. And when your vulture shuts up, the pressure to do well rolls off your shoulders and then you're free to enjoy your life again and you do great. That's why my I call them actor affirmations work. When you release your need for what you want, that's how to get it, okay? So if I was um, sitting where you guys are sitting and I had to do a scene today, my vulture would be screaming a lot of stuff to me uh, about how oh, I don't know these lines and I better impress Jack and um, I wonder who's watching. And so I would be saying affirmations based on what he's saying to me, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, the affirmations that uh, tend to come up for me at an audition, and you can pretend that you're saying them to yourself, and hopefully this will get your vulture to shut up, okay? So here's my favorites, here we go. I release and destroy my need to control this audition today. I am not strong enough to control it. Whenever I try, it doesn't work, it ruins it. So instead, I'm just gonna ask my higher power or my racing heart to just lovingly guide me through it. And however it goes, it was meant to go, even if it goes badly. I release and destroy my need to be an actor. I'm gonna let the other people here be the actors and actresses. I'm not an actor. I'm just here to be me and enjoy playing in these circumstances. I'm going to take it from where I am. So however I'm feeling and however prepared I am is a fine place to begin this scene. When the scene begins, I'll just approach it like an improv. Like it's really happening to me for the first time. If I was doing a drama scene today, I'd wanna to remind myself how I live my life because anything we get involved in that has nothing to do with our actual lives, you shouldn't be involved in when you're doing a film drama. So I always remind myself these three things because they return me to understanding how I actually live my life. That number one, I'm not gonna make choices, not one, but more importantly, I'm gonna allow choices to happen to me based on the circumstances so that everything that happens feels as though it's surprising me like it's spontaneous. And if nothing happens, that's fine because an audience can project on nothing. Nothing is fascinating. But if I make choices, I'll never book this job. Number two, uh, the words, I'm just gonna throw them away. I'm not gonna color them or deliver them. They're just gonna tumble out of my face when they want to. I have faith I have the character's thoughts and feelings. That's what matters. And the words, I'll just throw away because the scene is not about the words. The scene is about what's happening in the scene. Number three, I hope everyone out there, and Jack, I hope they feel so fucking uncomfortable watching me do this scene today. And I'm gonna do that by not taking care of the scene at all, but instead in only being interested in my experience of behaving as if this is really happening to me for the first time. If I was doing a comedy today, I'd wanna remind myself, I release and destroy my need to be funny. You don't make an audience laugh by trying to make them laugh. However, if you're tickled, they'll be tickled. So I release and destroy my need to be funny. I'm just here to tickle myself with what? My own genuine human behavior, because humans are weird. So our genuine human behavior is weird and we can tickle ourselves with that, with our genuine, spontaneous, unplanned human behavior. Uh, I guess lastly, I release and destroy my need to impress these people today. As a matter of fact, I give myself permission to hate everyone watching today. Fuck them, I don't give a fuck what they think. So wouldn't it be nice if those were the thoughts that you were putting in your head as you walk into the audition room, instead of what pops into your head out of habit, which is something more along the lines of, okay, don't fuck it up, okay, get this right, you know? So those are the actor affirmations. They're the most important thing I teach and that's because the acting part on film is so easy. Does anybody out there, who, I mean, who is here at the workshop today, any of you have any questions about anything I've shared? And I'm gonna add too that if you're in the workshop today, but you're unable to get into the, I guess they call it the waiting room or something, uh, that's because you can only have a certain number of people 
And so if, if you're not, um, if you're like one of the last couple people to perform, maybe leave this room and go back to the outside area so that people who are about to perform can come in. So anyway, do any of you out there have something your vultures saying to you right now and you don't know what to say back to him or her? And if, if you want, you just wave your hand to your camera and I'll uh, bring you up. Have any of you been saying the affirmation? Yes, I see you. Yes, hi. Hi, Jack. Um, good time seeing you. Um, I, I don't, what always comes up is, oh, fuck, did I learn the lines? Do I remember okay. the lines? My brain, yes. oh, my God, I have the brain of like an old broad. I mean, whatever it says to me at that moment. Your vulture wanted to, you always I'm wanted to. Am I going to remember them? Am I going to be stuck? Am I? Your vulture, well, obviously, the answer is very simple. I release and destroy my need to remember these lines. Mm -hmm. But then your vulture will have something new to say. It'll go, yeah, but then what if you just sit there like an idiot and you go, great. I hope there are moments where I'm sitting there like an idiot. In other words, thinking of what my next line is, because that's the best moment of the scene when the actor is thinking about their next line. Because while you're thinking of what is my next line, they're projecting fascinating thoughts on you. It looks like you're thinking. And you have to have those moments. You won't book work without those moments, but we get rid of those moments because we think they can read our mind and know that we blew it. But the truth is they can't. So hope you forget your lines and also know you're allowed to paraphrase. It's not the goal. We want to say a word perfectly, but we don't need to. And as long as you want to say a word perfectly, you'll never over paraphrase. Okay. But that's why as we're memorizing, we put all our focus on what the words mean, what the line means so that we could paraphrase if we have to. Because my rule for myself is um, I'm not gonna look down in my audition unless I can't remember the idea of my next line. And if I can, if I can sit and remember the idea of my next line, but I can't remember the exact words, I'll just paraphrase the line. I'd rather do that than look down. Cause this is where the fun is. This is where, this is where the selfish actor wants to be. And please remember that the reason why you can take all the time you want to stay up and remember the line is that when you're acting, your heart's racing, time speeds up. So what feels like 10 seconds of dead air, really like one second has gone by. But most importantly, has it ever helped you to remember your lines better, to have your vulture screaming, you're not going to remember these lines? No. no it puts exactly. pressure on your brain, and then your brain can't function like the supercomputer it is when your heart's racing. When your heart's racing, you become more than you are. You become superhuman because of all the blood going to your brain. I like to say it plugs me into my higher power. And suddenly you remember lines that you never knew you even memorized. But... If your vulture is screaming, you should have worked harder on this and you don't know the lines, you can't remember the words. So as, as, as soon as you go, fuck the words, fuck the words, I release and storm, I need to know any of the words, the vulture shuts up, the pressure comes off and suddenly you remember all the words. That's why my actor affirmations work. You, by releasing your need for what you want, that's how to get what you want, right? Because the old way ain't working. Yelling at yourself about how you're not prepared and you're old and your brain doesn't work has never made it better, has it? But by the way, your vulture has always wanted to tell you you can't memorize. It waits till the circumstances change to go, see, now you listen to me. So now you're listening to her because she tricked you because she said, well, it has to do with age. Bullshit. Okay. That was great. I don't need to get the lines right. I'd want to. Of course you want to. Because you hear other like casting directors say, you no, know, you've got book you got to know the line so you're like i need to i need to yeah okay so is that uh, I, i'll answer the rest of that but do you have any other questions about that no i don't need okay. to share about this. i know oh. other people Thank okay you. as far as act casting directors who the thing is you have to understand a casting director isn't an actor they're lovely people but most of them don't know how we do what we do and so at a casting director uh, workshop those are, are very nice things to do if you want to meet that casting director and have them see you so that you're in their mind for future jobs. But don't listen to their advice for actors because they're not actors. And so they don't have much to say. And so they always end up saying, uh, don't change the words. Well, listen, guys, I've been doing this in L.A. for a long time. I've paraphrased at many auditions and booked those jobs. I've cast a Broadway musical and a feature film, and I didn't care if people paraphrased as long as I felt that they wanted to get it word perfectly. Now, obviously there's a line you don't wanna cross where it just seems like you don't give a shit what the line is. But I don't think any of you are gonna do that. So don't worry about it. Um, 
if there's no other questions about affirmations, then I just want to talk a little bit more and then we'll begin. Nope, nobody has any more questions. Okay. Um, I always like to discuss the secret to auditioning because it is so important. Um, and that is that you are not here today to show us what the scene would look like in the finished product. Because all that will do is make you need to get it word perfect, keep it moving and make it look like a nice smooth polished surface. And it doesn't book work because you can't behave as if it's really happening, the definition of acting, when you're showing what the scene will look like out of out in the finished product, right? So the way I like to um, explain how to approach your audition is like this. Every, oh, I misspelled auditioning. I'm gonna, see, look, completely misspelled. Um, <laughs> Every actor, when they do book a job and they go to set, uh, their first take is always the same. And I call it, let me get something on film that won't embarrass me. You know that feeling? Or in other words, let me show what the scene will look like. It's the same thing. And the director is always like, Oof, well, let's keep doing it. I mean, that's why they do a lot of takes on the film set. So around the eighth take, the director will be like, great. Thanks, guys. We have it. It lives in those eight takes. We can move on to the next scene now. I have what I need. Oh, you know what? We got time to kill. I guess we could do it again, but whatever. This one's for you. I don't care. I don't need this take. And then, of course, what happens when the editor watches the ninth take? She's like, finally, something I can use. Because the great movies and TV shows are made of lucky accidents caught on film. So you want to approach your audition as if it's the ninth take where you have no responsibility to the scene. And instead, you're just playing in the circumstances, wanting shit to surprise you. Because when something surprises you in front of a rolling camera, there's an electric jolt in the air. Everyone watching feels it. And the more of those you have, the better chance you have of booking the job. That's how you book a job. Because you can't fake spontaneity. So every actor's motto should be, all I want to do is surprise myself. So how do I do the ninth take? And again, the reason why the ninth take is so important is it's the only time we give ourselves permission to act. The only time we give ourselves permission to behave as if it's really happening. So here's what I do. Right before I go in for an audition, I pretend that I've already done the audition and the director is just gonna have me do it one more time. But the director says first, he goes, so I pretend, and I, I, I literally say this to myself in my head. I pretend I'm the director talking to me and he says, cause he's just seen my, my performance. He says, oh my God, Jack, thank you so much for bringing in all those beautiful choices. They were perfect for the scene and I have them all on film perfectly and I'm gonna use them. So since we're done, and I'm never gonna look at this take, I guess you don't have to do any of that great stuff you brought in. Um, gosh, I guess just behave as if it's really happening. Just wanna surprise yourself. Oh, take all the time you want. And you have permission to do it badly. I'm never gonna look at this take. And then I do my audition. That's where I'm coming from when I do my audition. It's the only time we give ourselves permission to act. And when actors aren't doing that, they're just, they're just behaving like an actor with a great responsibility to show what the scene will look like. It's no fun, it's not acting, and it doesn't book work. So don't fall into that trap. Does anybody have any questions about the ninth take, what it is, or how to do it? No. Okay, so we're gonna get started with Tom. How are ya? Is your mic on? It is now. <laughs> okay, so you're doing a drama scene? Yes. And it, my understanding is that you're a teacher, right? Right. And you're, you're, you're here today in your classroom to talk to a, a parent about their child. It says that the boy's teacher gets up from a kid's work table and smiles as Bernie, the father, enters. So um, you have the first line. So whenever you're ready, we'll start. Sorry, you're, you're breaking up a little, Jack. Um, okay, I said you have the first line. So whenever you're ready, we'll start. Okay. Hi, I'm Mr. Garcia. We'll talk later. Okay, bye. Sorry about that. Oh my goodness, Bernie Evers. You're Mr. Garcia. 
I didn't connect it. Long time, Will. Easy. You're not still in the neighborhood? No, I'm over in Shadyside. An elementary teacher, yeah, makes sense. Yes, an elementary teacher. Almost 25 years. How are you? Good. How's Helen? Still remember that Clark Park cake she used to make? Remember that? Every year for my birthday, yeah. My, my mom passed away a few years ago. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Don't worry. How's your mom doing? She's okay. She's Carla. She's Carla. She's okay. I mean, she's Carla. How, how, she's okay. She's Carla. Is she still in the same house? Uh, well, Maddie and me are there. Carla's in a, a care home. Oh, yeah. Growing old stuff. Here, let's let's talk about Maddie. Well, first, uh, Maddie's a very neat kid. Thanks. Is he your only? My only. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's very sweet. Much different than you back then. <laughs> and he's smart. I don't mean to say that, that you weren't smart. Yeah, brings home a lot of stars and happy faces. Yes, there's a great fondness for stars and happy faces. Hey, he does love to read. Uh, he loves Greek gods and Harry Potter, talks about them all the time. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Has he ever? Sorry, that's you. Yeah. Yeah. He likes has he ever um, talked to you about how he sees himself? What do you mean? Well, I gave a writing assignment in class. Um, we worked on it for about a week. Here. The prompt um, was the best day you ever had. Um, what was the best day you could imagine? And most little boys write about meeting their childhood super uh, sports heroes or, um, you know, going out into outer space. Yeah. And most little boys don't write about being little girls. Right. It's well written. Has he ever mentioned anything like this before? Uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Has he, has he ever, has he, um, has he ever mentioned anything like this before? It is what it is. What if, what if it's more than that? Like what? Like how Maddie feels about who he is? Like if he's gay? Well, I don't know. He's eight. That's who he is. Are you saying he's gay? No, I'm not saying he's gay. He's eight. I'm not saying it's about being gay. He wrote about being a girl. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's eight, he does stupid shit, he's doing his work in class, is he? Pardon? He does his work, huh? Yes. Behaves? Yes. So uh, I can tell him Mr. Garcia says he's doing okay? Bernie, look, I'm sorry if I- if I No, no, it's fine, it's like fine, I, it's fine. I didn't mean to um, rub you the wrong way. It's fine. I'm really just trying to help. And I care about you and Maddie. I, I, Bernie, I didn't, I'm sorry if I offended you or. Good, let's stop. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Sorry you're having an issue with sound, um, but what was your experience of that? And the reason why we're gonna talk about your experiences, as an actors, you guys, it's your experience that matters. 
as film actors, it's your experience that matters because the audience can only have the experience you have. They can only feel what you feel. If you have a shitty experience acting because your vulture's squawking a bunch of shit to you, which makes behaving as if the scene is really happening nearly impossible, then that's a, a bad experience for you. So it's a bad experience for them. If you have an experience where your vulture is silent, so it's easy to just behave as if it's really happening, then that's a good experience for you. So it's a good experience for the audience. That's why we're talking about your experience, not the result of the scene. That's why I tell actors you have to be selfish because any part of you that's worrying with your, e with your vulture voice about what the audience thinks is a part of you that's not having a rich, selfish, emotional, surprising experience, thereby giving the audience a rich, surprising, emotional experience. So what was your experience at that time? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking about? Um, just the connection stuff. Um, I know. I, I... You're talking about the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. I understand. Yes. Was I freezing or was it just that you couldn't hear me? Could you see my lips moving? No, you were freezing. Oh, uh, that's got to be very frustrating for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, it happens. But I yeah. really, um, I, 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 I have expected it because it was happening in the opening portion of the class. Um, uh, By a show of hands out there, the actors in the waiting room, could you wave if I'm breaking up and freezing? Could you wave if I'm, you see that I'm breaking up and freezing? We have one person who's saying I am, but nobody else is. So I, I don't think it's coming from me. It's, it's just the, the drama of, of moving online before. I mean, the thing is in the future, it'll be like I'm there. There'll be a 3D image of me on your desktop. I'll probably be dead by then, but the point is, this is <laughs> this is where we are. So, Tom, let's talk about the part though when I, you know, when it wasn't overwhelming the the Wi-Fi connection. What was your experience of that? Anything your vulture was squawking that that you didn't like? Ah, uh, fuck. Oh, now you're back. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm That's not... okay. Anything your vulture was squawking about that you did that did, you didn't like in the parts where the Wi-Fi was, you know, good enough. Um. Not that I can think of, no. Did anything feel better than usual based on what you've been working on with me? Yes. 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 I started I started by leaning back for one thing. And that I tell just so actors know out there, I tell everyone, please make leaning back your home base. Absolutely during the scene, feel free to lean forward. Or you can start a scene leaning forward, but make leaning back in your chair your home base. You can read about why in my book. But go on. Yeah, and, and I really gave myself the gift of a leisurely um, chunk of time um, to, to work on the lines, um, like turned off the phone and just really respected the work beforehand. And that, that I think bled into being able to take my time in class. Because you knew the lines better. Yeah. Is that because, um, I'm going to get up to just do some of the window. Is that because in the past you uh, may not spend as much time as you felt you needed to, to uh, memorize? I, yes. Oh, okay. Well, good. I mean, look, here's the thing. I don't have, all I do to prepare is memorize. That's all I do because the only two things I do is memorize and scene comprehension. And I don't really even do scene comprehension until I get to the audition. So all I do to prepare for an audition is memorize. Uh, I don't have a thing called rehearse. And so, uh, yeah, I spend the amount of time I want to or feel I, you know, should. And um, the thing is, what I've learned is I never book a job because I spent more time memorizing. Because, <laughs> you know, like I'll memorize the shit out of a bunch of auditions and then book the fifth one where I didn't have time to memorize. So it's important to understand that's not the answer, but what I like is that you're doing something that you want to do and you enjoyed it, and that's great. But I, I also, I like to be so memorized that I didn't, never have to look down at the page. That's my goal, but we can't for every audition, and it's important to remind everyone you don't have to. You can book jobs when you haven't had the time you think you need to memorize. So go on. Uh, anything else that your vulture wasn't saying today because of the work you've been doing? Uh, I'm learning how to talk to the vulture because of the work I've been doing. Yeah. So, so 
I, I was really, really, really loving this audition. And I could tell that you've let go of a bunch of ultra squats today. I'll give you an example. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I, I'm able to tune in to this vulture. Uh, that's my personal vulture. And I had a little bite to eat during the opening portion of class. And I saw your face and my vulture started saying, he's, he thinks you're disrespectful. He thinks you're a disrespectful acting student. And I responded with, I released into the story, my need to be a respectful acting student. And that kind of set me off on a good. Um, yeah, you let your vulture know he's not in control today. Tone. Yeah. And you could add to that, look, I forgive myself unconditionally. I'm a good person and good people make mistakes. It doesn't mean I'm not a good person. Uh, I'm relaxed, trusting in a higher plan that's unfolding for me for my greatest good, meaning I was meant to take this bite of food. And also I have permission to fucking hate you. Why the fuck would I care if he thinks I'm disrespectful? Yeah. I'm really thrilled to hear that. It was just a wonderful audition. And I know you got frustrated by Wi-Fi, but up until that started, it was just, it was just fucking great. I mean, I, I don't need to see it again unless you want to do them again. I love the audition. Oh, thanks. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank yeah, you. it was what I call creepy real. I'm like, is he acting? Or are we just still talking? Like, I love the amount of time, the selfishness of the amount of time you were taking. It was making everyone feel uncomfortable because no one was taking care of the scene. Uh, I, you're frozen, so I bet you I'm frozen on your screen. No, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, is there? I mean, did you want to do a little again, or what do you? What are you up for? Do you want to talk about something? Is there anything you want to? Yeah, we're not going to do the scene again if this is going to happen. But I will say. If your microphone is working, I have a, a minute or two left to stop, talk to you. Is there anything else you want to talk about your experience of doing the scene? Tom, is there anything else you want to share about yeah, your experience? No I, I, no, I can't think of anything, Jack. Okay, well, um, well, again, I'll just reiterate, I'm super proud of you. You know, your goal in working, uh, I think, in a workshop is every time you come in to do your second or third read the first time. Yeah. And boy, did you. It was just terrific. I can tell that the work you're doing, uh, you're letting go of things that used to give you anxiety or make, make you have a harder time of behaving as if it's really happening. This to me was a, such a great audition, so selfish. I loved how much you were being surprised by things in your performance. And so, yeah, great work. Thank you so much, man. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so up next is Regina. And hi there, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you, nice, nice to, to have you here. Where, yeah. where are you coming to us from? From New York. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's good. Are you in Manhattan? No, I'm actually in Long Island. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and I actually met you in LA. So I used to live in Los Angeles and, and I did a couple workshops with you in person in Los Angeles. So this is great that you're doing this online. I really appreciate it, yeah. Oh, thank you for your kind words. It's nice to see you again. And you this too. is a drama. We're doing Rose, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Rose has uh, been visiting her uh, boyfriend's house for the first time and she meets has met his family and in this scene, it's the bedroom she's staying in, and it says that her boyfriend, Tommy, walks in to find her packing. So I have, you need me to close that? Yes, okay. Sorry, hold on. I got a leaf blower situation happening. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have the first line, so let me know when you're ready and, and I'll start. Okay. Ready. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm packing, Tommy. It's it's over. Okay. The the, the fat woman is is singing her aria. Oh, stop it! You're you're, you're being a what? Over dramatic, right? Isn't I'm being over dramatic. Well, that's what I do. 
I'm over dramatic. I over analyze. I overthink. I over drink, and I I overshare. Look, I know they were being hard on you back there, but your sister. <laughs> Your sister called me a. <laughs> she called me a, a pomeridian or a pomeridian. The... You misunderstood yes. No, she loves little dogs. Oh my God. And then you, look at you, you're defending her. No, I'm not defending her. I, 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 out of everything that happened, it's the dog comment that pushed you over the edge? No. I mean, I don't care about the dog. Then why are you picking? Because you're, because you're just an it. You're you're just a jerk. You know you're jerk. you're a real jerk. I'm a jerk. Yes. I didn't do anything. It, exactly. Exactly. You didn't do. You didn't do anything. I mean, here I am, and your family is like coming at me, and like like birds in that in that movie that um that that the birds. Uh, Yes, the, the birds and good. Good. Let's stop there. Okay. Good. What's your experience of that? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking about? Well, it's it's interesting um, because I really went into this scene. I was thinking about what you said last week about putting the circumstances in your belly, and then just like being willing to release and destroy whatever the vulture's saying and, and tr try to have fun. So I really, I really wanted to have fun. Um, I, um, I really wanted to see where it would go and just trust that it's going to be there. I, um, I have issue, you know, I'll just, yeah. So do you want to yeah. share the issue? You don't have to say anything well, you don't want to say. No, I mean, it's okay. I, I had, I was a working actress for a while and I had a brain injury and lost my memory. Like, my short-term memory. So I literally w became terrified of being on set again and getting changes to a script and, or like an adjustment or like a camera movement. Um, so I have a lot of fear that I have to work through to, to get back to that place. Um, and that's okay. It's just where I'm at. So, um, you know, okay. being able to release and destroy the need to get the, the words perfectly is a good yeah. feeling. Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So did anything feel better than usual based on what you've been working on with the vulture? Like, was there anything uh, she didn't, she wasn't squawking as loudly today based on the work you've done? He really no. wasn't. Well, he, you, there you was know, a you, moment where he was. But she, Ladies have she lady was. vultures, I'm kidding. So um, <laughs> it's true, was. but um, okay, so a couple of things. If I, I'm very, like it seems persnickety about how actors verbalize their experience and that's because your thoughts create your reality. Shit, I left, I closed mm -hmm. that window. I left that window wide open. <laughs> and now a bet for you. It's very important how you how you word the reality to yourself because your thoughts will create your reality. And you said some things that were a little, uh, let's say, you said uh, one thing you, you talked about how you want to get back to that place. And what I'd say is I definitely think you should release and destroy your need to get back to that place. Because yeah. it's not that you have somewhere to get back to. It's that you now have a vulture saying things that she didn't used to get away with saying. But because the circumstances change, she'll now go, well, see, now you'll listen to me tell you how you can't remember words. Um, physically or whatever, are you, is your memory coming back? I mean, obviously, you seem to know all those words. So obviously, you can memorize again. Yeah. And that's, okay. that's, that's the thing. I mean, it does. Right, so it does like, you know. but see, what she'll do is she'll go, yeah, but you can't memorize as well as you used to. You're not perfect. And you just got to go, oh, no, I never need to be who I was. This is awesome. I'm going to take it from where I am. This is how well I memorize and I don't need to be perfect. I release into storm. I need to be perfect. And I hope I forget the words because this is not a scene about a girl who knows what she's going to say. Right. It's a scene about somebody thinking out loud. And if you know the words too well, you will come off as like a person who knows what I'm going to say and knows who they're going to say. 
And that's not what this is a scene about. You had no, you didn't want him in the room. You didn't want to have to explain why you're going. You wouldn't be so bad at explaining how, why you're going if you knew what you were going to say. If you don't right. stutter and stumble in this scene, then you're not doing this scene. Do you understand? Yeah. But your vulture yeah. will convince you otherwise. Yeah. Was there anything specifically your vulture was saying while you were performing the scene? You told me your goal, I wanted to do this. And then you said, and here's why it's harder for me to do that. But you haven't told me yet what your vulture was saying in the scene. Um, oh, well, right. You said, I want to have fun. I want to have fun. That was the second thing I want to uh, just be yeah. careful with. Release and sure you need to have fun. <laughs> in a way, whenever I have to do a scene, I don't want to do it. It's so uncomfortable. Right. But it's exciting. And yeah. after the audition, when I leave an audition and my vulture didn't squawk, I am walking on air. And the nice thing is that's when we tend to book work. But I don't go into an audition going, have fun, Jack. You need to have fun. Because in a way, is it fun? It's really, it's like going on a really exciting roller coaster, right? And yes, yeah. that's fun. But I wouldn't use the word fun to describe my experience of going into an audition because it's so uncomfortable. But if yeah. you let your vulture say, have fun, it will make you muscle moments and color words because it will convince you that having fun is taking good care of the scene and making shit happen. And in a drama, mm -hmm. you don't want to get involved in any of that. You don't want to make choices. You don't want to color words, you know? So yeah. I asked, what was your vulture saying? Anything in particular during the performance? There was a moment where I lost my place. You should hope to lose your place because the character life is constantly losing our place. So the yeah. brilliant British actress, Glenda Jackson says, she memorizes lines and puts them out of her head. So she's forced to remember them in the moment, like real life. Yeah. I love when I don't know a scene well, then I'm really aligned with the character. It'll yeah. come to you. It'll That's come great. to you and time has sped up because your heart's racing. Right, right. So you could take all the time you want. Anything else your vulture said? Um, no. Okay. Not, not at this so moment. So here are my thoughts for you. I really liked that audition because you were behaving as if it's really happening. Mm -hmm. But I want you to go further. We can all go further down the road of not making choices, not muscling moments. They mean sort of the same thing. And throwing away the words. In particular, I think your desire to have, quote, fun made you, muscle, uh, made you deliver the lines and color the words when I really just want you to throw them away. Okay. This is a scene about yeah. what's happening in the scene. It's not a scene about these words. The words you go away. And what's happening yeah. in the scene is I am packing to get the fuck out of here. I wanted to just get out of here without him even noticing. And mm -hmm. now he's in the room. And I, I, I just want to, and we, you know, she keeps packing. He says, stop. So she's not standing there delivering these a sort of speech to him, right? She's yeah. thinking out loud. It's a very interesting thing. Almost every scene we're ever going to do in our lives is a scene about somebody thinking out loud, right? Yeah, so great. I want I want to do the exercise I love because it gets rid of the moment when the scene begins and we're under pressure to act, where I talk to you about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate. And then in the middle of us talking, I'm going to say start the scene. I'm going to start the scene. And the goal is, without looking at the script, to jump right into the scene but bring right with you into the scene how you really think and communicate so that the audience can't even tell the scene began. You see? Uh, now, that means you really want to let go of any way you ever thought to do this scene because we already saw it anyway. And instead, just say, look, I'll just, uh, just see what happens. I'll just, you know, take it from where I am. Now, listen, again, in a way, when, I, when, when someone says, okay, Jack, do the scene again, there's a part of me that doesn't want to. You don't have to want to because she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to say any of this, nor does she know it will continue past her first line. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to want to say any of it. It'll come out when it comes out. Just have faith you're packing. I mean, if you have something there right in front of you that you could be putting things into something, that's fine if you want to. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. again, this is just for you to remember how you really think and communicate. We'll bring that right into the scene so they can't tell the scene even began. Tell yourself, I'm going to go further down the road of not making choices than I ever have because I don't have to make any choices because if nothing happens, the audience will project on nothing. Nothing's awesome. 
And I'm going to go further down the road of just throwing away the words. And I hope the audience feels fucking uncomfortable watching this. Nobody should want to watch this moment in your life. It's too uncomfortable. So hope the audience is fucking uncomfortable. And you'll do that by not taking care of the scene at all. When you were younger, what were the schools you went to? Oh, God. Uh, all Catholic schools. St. Anne's, St. Joseph's. What was a class you hated to be in? Oh, math. It was the worst. How did you feel in math? Oh, it was terrible. Like I could I felt um I felt like this big. Did you have a friend who um hurt your feelings? Yes. Who was it? Oh, that would be my friend. Where I were mean, you when it happened? Um oh I I don't really remember exactly. How I guess I was know? in a bathroom. I was in a bathroom. Yeah. We're starting the scene. What what are you what are you doing? I'm I'm leaving. I'm packing. I'm leave. I'm. It's over between us. The fat lady's singing. Stop Aria. it! Come on, you're you're being. What? I'm being ridiculous. I'm being over dramatic. I mean, that's what I I am. I, that's what I do, right? That's what you say that I do all the time. Is I'm over dramatic. I overthink. I overanalyze. I over, whatever. I over drink, and then I I overshare. Look, I know they were being a little hard on you back there, but... Okay, your sister called me a Pomeranian. No, you, you misunderstood her. She loves little dogs. Oh, why are you defending her? What? Look at you. No, you know what? Now I really do have a reason to leave. Out of everything that happened, it's a dog comment that pushed you over the edge? No, it's not the dogs. Then why? Why are you packing? Because it's just, I, I just, I can't, I don't understand why you just, you just think your whole family was just coming at me down there. Like, just like, like just everywhere. Like, like that, like the birds, like in that, that movie that, you know, um, the birds. Yes. The birds. And you did nothing. You you just stood there. And and I'm looking at you with these eyes, these eyes like, please save me, just save me. And you did you did nothing, Tommy, like You know, your family can call me. Good, good. Let's stop there. Okay. Good. What was your experience of that that time? Yeah, I mean, I had an experience. I think what you're saying is that time I was more behaving as if it was really happening. Yeah. That's the definition of acting. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so you. So now that you had that experience where your vulture wasn't squawking so much, are you clear on what your vulture was saying so much of the first time? Um, yes, yes, now I am. It, it really was about taking care of the scene. Okay, good, that's all our vulture talks about, result-oriented, fear-based thoughts. Now, yeah. wouldn't you say that was easier than the first time? Yes. And more fun? Yes. Well, that's a great thing about the my acting workshop is whenever actors have a beautiful adjustment, and that, my dear, was a stunning drama audition, they always say it was easier and more fun, and that's because I guess acting is easier and more fun than we thought. Yeah. And if it's better and it's easier, that means it's not better because we worked on it at all. If it's better and easier, that means it's better because you stop being involved in things you don't need to be involved in, things that were making your acting harder and not as good, which was anything your vulture was squawking about. Because I think you'll agree that time you had no vulture squawking, right? Well, then next time you act, just tell your vulture, no, I release and destroy my need for anything you're saying. Even if it sounds totally true, fuck that shit. And then you'll do what you just did. Because that exercise, all it really does is make your vulture shut up. Because when you're talking about your friend from high school, you don't have a vulture squawking. And then yeah. when you jump into the scene, your vulture often forgets you're doing a scene and doesn't start squawking. But the affirmations do that better. 
Mm-hmm. The affirmations do get your vulture to shut up better than that exercise because your affirmations deal with what your vulture is saying specifically. You follow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, what I'd say, and, and that moment when you were hit by that powerful image or concept that made you feel that powerful emotional feeling, that's what books work. And I was so thrilled by that moment and so blown away by it. And I'm so glad that you were open to having that experience because I was waiting for you to, you know, as actors, we must want to feel. You've got to want to feel, but remember the character doesn't. Nobody wants to start crying. Nobody wants to yell at their boyfriend. So what you do is you have faith that there's a seed of sadness in your belly. You push it down. But when you push down a seed of sadness, it grows stronger and you feel it more. And so the opposite it more. What's happening is, is that in the moment of silence, when it's your turn to talk and you don't know your next line, you're letting your culture still go, come on, come on, come on. And that's keeping you from remembering the line. Yes. So please be kind to yourself in those moments and be okay with the silent moment because during that silent moment, they are projecting fascinating thoughts on you. So you have to have that knowledge in your belly that while you're going, what the fuck is my line? You have the knowledge that they're going, Oh my God, this is so fascinating. Okay. Cause that's what you're missing is you think we're waiting for you. We're not, we're, we're acting with you and for you. We're projecting it on you. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to say a line, pretend I forgot the second one. And then I'll say the second one. And it looks like this. I can't leave my wife. She needs me. And so do the kids. Yeah. Looks like you're thinking, but what happens is you say a line and you go, come on, come on, come on. And then your brain can't retrieve the next line. Okay. So yeah. don't kick yourself in those moments of silence or you won't remember your next line. Beautiful work. That was wonderful. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. okay so up next is um, Hillary. Hi. Hey, hi. 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 So we're going to do this scene and then we're going to take a short break. Okay. And Hillary, if I'm correct, you're doing Lisa King, correct? Uh, is I, was it Lisa? Yes, 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 you are correct. Yeah, it's Victoria. Okay, are you doing scene one or what, what scene are you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, scene one. Scene. Yeah, I'm scene doing one. the one, yeah. With the aunt. Yes, you're playing Victoria. Now, this is a drama for the people out there just getting to know this scene. And she is married. You were married to a man who died, right? Uh, my son died, Evan. My Your son, son died. died. Yes. And now I'm a police detective and CIS in the conference room. Yes. And it says that I'm handing a glass of water to Victoria and that she's um, a strong woman. She's been to hell and back. Now she's on track and she's proud of it. That's what the stage directions say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So because you begin the scene, I'll just let you begin when you're ready. And again, this is an hour long drama. Yeah, right. So, um, right. 47 minutes. Okay. The brandy wine was 10 years ago. My son is dead. Do you ever stop asking questions? This isn't about your son, it's about your ex-husband. What husband? I divorced him after my son died. Whatever is going on with him, I have nothing to say. I have plenty to say. He's a main suspect in a series of explosions aboard Navy vessels. That's it's not possible. He was he was devastated when Evan died. He would he wouldn't put any family through that, or son or daughter, never. When did you last speak? Three years ago, I don't, maybe four. And did he ever talk about his anger towards the Navy for not being able to protect your son? He was angry most of the time. He, after the incident um, with the Navy, with me with all his work colleagues. Your son was important to him. Yes, Harper called him his shining star. 
He was the first thing he thought of when he woke up, and he was the last thing he thought of when he went to bed. Doesn't leave much room for you. Our marriage wasn't about love or mutual respect. The one thing that held us together was heaven. And well, when he died, there was nothing left for us to get. Okay, good. Let's stop there. I'm just opening my windows. What was your experience of that? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking? Um, at first I thought, oh, fuck, I'm acting. Well, of course you're acting. Release and destroy your need not to act. We're actors and we're doing a scene. But what you want to do is make it feel as if you're behaving as if it's really happening. So if you meant that you became aware that you were not behaving as if it's really well, happening. Of course but I got aware that I was like, fuck, what's that last line? And I was like, who gives a shit? Just what would I say? I would, I'm defensive. I really didn't want to talk. I was like, okay, here. I didn't. So I got there was a moment when your vulture said you're acting. There was a moment when your vulture said, shit, what's the last line? What else? Um, I said to myself, it doesn't fucking matter what I say. Just be in. No, I'm glad. I'm so glad that you that you just explained to everyone out there that you, when your vulture squawks while you're acting, you you should say an affirmation back to it while you're acting because the audience can't read your mind. And when you say that affirmation back to your vulture, or even just no, fuck it, your vulture shuts up. The pressure rolls off, and you can once again behave as if it's really happening. So I'm very pleased to hear you're doing that while you're acting. And eventually, the more you do the affirmations, you'll be able to get through a whole audition with no vulture squawking. Could you imagine? It's glorious. Um, so anything else your vulture said other than you're acting and you're gonna forget the line? Uh, that was pretty now. That's enough to get me fucking going. Did any, so um, was there anything that felt better than usual based on the work you've been doing with me? Um, well, I, I, I have practiced just like memorizing as much as I can and then playing me in the circumstance. I love doing that. I had, I did a class last week and it was such a great scene because I was like, just fucking be me. Like how would Hillary do it? And it really, I love settling myself into that because it just feels like. Well, you know? you're behaving as if the scene is really happening to you, but it is you in that character's specific set of circumstances, but it's you. Yeah. 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 It's, just, it's so easy to act that way. It yes. really so playful and fun. Good. Um, now here's the thing, by the way, you know, the goal of the workshop is to come in and do your second or third read the first time. And boy, did you ever, I was so proud of you to me, this was your best first go at the drama. Uh, I really loved so much of it. However, here's, here's my notes. Um, all your vulture wants you to do at a drama audition is start muscling and making choices, right? That's all I want you to do because if the casting person sees you making choices and muscling the scene, they'll never bring you back again. And your right. ego is the half of you that wants you to fail. So um, it's another reason why we must get control of our vulture because when your vulture squawks in a drama audition, we tend to start muscling the scene. So, you know, I could tell that your vulture was squawking and that as a result of it, you started muscling the scene. It sort of kept happening sort of throughout the scene and especially in the first third of the scene and then for uh, your vulture got quieter and then we, we saw some beautiful drama acting but um that's why it's so important to get control of your vulture because whatever it's saying even if it's about the words when our vulture squawks that's when actors start muscling and making choices and i i want you to go further down the road of not making any choices than you ever have and it's going to make you uncomfortable and that's what you want because I won't feel uncomfortable watching this scene if you're doing what you just did for the first third, which was to muscle, like muscle all the moments and deliver the lines. Uh, I, I want to feel like I'm watching something that's creepy real, like I'm pulling a curtain aside, watching something I'm not supposed to watch. And to do that, all you have to do is just go, look, I'd rather do nothing than get involved in the stuff I think that all the other actors are doing that's so brilliant. So I'm not going to make any choices, which is liberating. 
It means all responsibility of making choices is off your shoulders. And instead, you'll just see what happens to you when you behave as if this is really happening. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to leave all this empty space, empty space for you to receive gifts of interesting or powerful images or concepts that you might have an emotional reaction to. So this woman doesn't want to be here. She's not here because, oh, please, please help me. Her fucking son died. And now they want to come in and talk to you again about maybe that your husband is killing people. Have faith you have her thoughts and feelings. That's what matters. The words you're just going to throw away. It's not about the words. It's about doing an improv about being called in the police station. Okay. That feels, that resonates. So take it from where you are. You're not even an actress. You're just here to be you and enjoy playing the circumstances. And the director just said, oh, I have it. You don't do any of that great stuff you brought in. I don't care what, you don't have to do anything. I don't care. I guess just behave as if it's really happening. Just want to surprise yourself. Take all the time you want and you have permission to do it badly. I'm never going to look at this take. Here we go. Brandy wine happened 10 years ago. My son is dead. Why do you guys keep coming up with these questions? Okay, so all I just saw was a lot of delivering lines. Even your hands got involved. Because your body went, your body went, oh my God, you're not going to act? Well, who's going to take care of the scene? Well, maybe if we do this, at least it'll seem like someone's acting. So we're going to have you talk about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate. We'll bring that right into the scene. Now, you don't have to want to do the scene again because she doesn't want to be here talking about the death of her son. It's painful. So I'm, I'm going to have you talk about something. It's not for substitution. It's for you to remember how you think and communicate. When I say start the scene, jump right into the scene. But bring right with you into the scene how you really think and communicate. So I can't tell the scene began. Okay. When you were younger, were you close to your grandparents? No, I was not. Okay. Was there an adult in your life that meant a lot to you as a kid? Uh, no, there wasn't actually. My father, I guess. I guess I did care about my father. Another when you think of that, he did your father feel alone or lonely? Um, yeah, he did a lot of times. Where was he when he would be feeling alone and lonely? Around my mother. And where do you see him in the house when he's alone and lonely? In the kitchen, just against the wall. Start the scene. The brandy wines happened 10 years ago. My son is dead. Do you people ever stop asking questions? This isn't about your son. This is about your ex-husband. How can I? We divorced after my son died. Whatever he's gotten into, I I don't know anything about. I don't want to hear it. I, I want nothing to do. Well, I need to say about it. It means suspicions of explosion aboard Navy vessels. That's, that's impossible. After Evan died, it destroyed him. He would never, he would never destroy another family or their Okay, son. good, good. We're going to go back to the beginning of this line. I want you to understand that you should have faith that you don't know what I'm going to say and you don't know what you're going to say. But what happens is when it comes time to say your line, you think you're supposed to know what you're going to say. Right. And so you get what's called yes. on the words. But this is an improv about thinking out loud. That's why I have you think out loud about your dad so you can remember what it is to think out loud. We're going to start with that's not possible. Evan's death, okay? Do you have a friend who left your life? Uh, yeah, I've had a, quite a few people. Okay, yeah. see how you're thinking out loud? Name one. Um, Astrid left my life. He's the main suspect in a series of explosions around in Navy vessels. That's not possible. No? No, that's not possible. After Evan died, he was devastated. He... He would never put a family through that and kill sons and daughters, never. When did you last speak? Probably three, maybe four years ago. And did he ever talk to you about his anger towards the Navy for not being able to protect your son? He was angry about everything after it happened. The Navy, he was angry at me, he was angry at his work colleague. Your son was important to him. Yeah, my son was his shining star. It's the first thing he thought about in the morning and the 
last thing we thought about this one was let it rain. Doesn't leave much room for you. Our marriage was not based on love or mutual respect. So let me ask you, easier or harder than the first time? A lot easier. Oh, wow. So whenever the scene gets fucking fantastic, and my dear, you know how good that was. Mm -hmm. How much you were behaving as if it was really happening for the first time. People always say it was easier and more fun, and that's because acting is easier and more fun than we thought. Mm -hmm. And it's better and easier because you actually stopped being involved in things, which was the stuff your vulture was whispering to you about that made you feel pressure and responsibility. Right? Because you had no vulture squawking that time. Not at all. Mm -mm. Well, that's why it's so important to get control of our vulture. And again, you don't need to remind yourself how you really think and communicate right before an audition because you've been really thinking, communicating all day long. What you have to do is get your vulture to shut up. And the affirmations are the way to do that because your vulture is still convincing you through little subtle whispers that you have a responsibility to show what the scene will look like, to get all the words out. Mm to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. So fuck all that stuff, because it will keep you from doing the beautiful work you just did. And again, I'll just share with everybody, you've got to remember to have faith that it's happening for the first time, which means you don't know what I'm gonna say, you don't know what you're gonna say, and anything could happen. These are just the words, but the, you know, the words you throw away, it's anything could happen in terms of thoughts, sound, movement, added words, images in your mind, feelings, mm -hmm. okay? Very good work. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to take, thank you. We're going to take a little break, literally a four minute break. And uh, then we'll be back with Lisa. So fill your cups because we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. I had a person in the comments section ask, uh, how do you put circumstances in your belly? And the answer is simple. Obviously, you're not 
really like physically putting anything in your belly. It's, uh, but here's how I like to answer that. When you put the circumstances of the scene in your head, you spend the scene feeling a responsibility to show what the, is happening in the scene. And it makes us show what the scene would look like. So don't put circumstance in your head. Put them in your belly, meaning trust your gut to do with them what it will. Or another way to say it is throw them away. You're not stupid. You're not going to forget you're about to do a scene about a guy who wants to ask his girlfriend to marry him. So you don't even need to worry about them. Just throw them away and just behave as if that's really happening. You're doing an improv about asking the girl you love to marry you. So I hope that helps. But again, there's a chapter about it. So Lisa, I'm going to bring you up now. And Lisa and I have worked together for a long time. And you're one of, you were like in the very first... Um, one of the very first group of actors that I worked with here in LA. It's just <laughs> wonderful to see you again. <laughs> so you're doing, um, what is the scene you're doing again? Uh, Diane? I'm Diane, yeah, the second scene. Okay, so Diane, I believe, kind of is a, a boss at a company and she's decided to hire a certain woman for the, country, for the company. This is my understanding, let me know if I'm wrong. And they're in the hotel ballroom bar, and uh, uh, she's talking to this me, the new employee, as they move to another part of the bar. That's that's what's happening in the scene, and it's a drama. Right? Yeah. Okay. So since I begin the scene, you just let me know when you're ready, and I'll begin. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so where's the ecstasy crowd? I'm supposed to schmooze with. Let's have a drink first. Um, two tequilas, please. No ice. So, um, we can begin again. It's no big deal. Once yeah. in a while, this happens where you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to start again. I always recommend to actors to know your first few lines. And there's no reason not to. And I'm not saying you didn't do this, Lisa. I'm saying it to everybody else while you're looking at your lines. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's no reason not to know your first few lines because you begin the scene. So always, before I start every audition, I always go like this. I go, hold on one second, sorry. Just now I'm looking at my first line, I'm looking at my second line, I'm looking at my third line. Okay, I'm ready. They never mind you doing that. Okay, so, okay, here we go. So where's the ecstasy crowd I'm supposed to be schmoozing with? Um, let's get a drink first. Um, two tequilas, please, no ice. I'm a believer in um, substances to, to make people more receptive to certain kinds of personal work. Sometimes it's um, Prozac, sometimes it's ecstasy, and sometimes it's blue agave. Cheers. Mm. So, what makes someone turn down a schizophrenia fellowship at Harvard to spend weekends in a stinky psych ER? How did you, um, I didn't tell anyone about the fellowship. Oh, well, we only get to rehire here every, every on the faculty every few years. So I did my homework and I chose you, but I think Real question is, why did you choose us? Hmm? Well, like I said this morning, Bellevue is hardcore. What is it about you that needs things to be hard? I didn't say hard, I, I said... Maybe the patients here make you feel sane in comparison. Maybe you have a hero complex. Maybe you just like doing puzzles where you, that make you break your nose. Oh, you're good. Let's talk about your experience of doing it. Anything come up you don't care for? Anything you're vulturous squawking about? Um, my vulture was saying, are you, are you uh, making sure you're getting all the lines right? Oh, I could tell you had line anxiety. Now, listen, it's so important to get our vulture to be silent because if you're feeling the effects of a vulture, again, since acting runs on empathy, the audience can only feel what you feel. They feel it too. Now, they don't know what's happening. They just go, 
Yeah, I like I like Lisa. Yeah, let, you know, well, I, I like to bring Lisa in, but not not she's not right for this role, not this role. And really, what happened was you had a vulture squawking for this time about lines. So, um, what, uh, was, what was your vulture saying about lines? Oh, I think you've got your lines. That's good. <laughs> but what? That's all. You know, like I thought you said no your vulture was squawking about the lines. Yeah, I think so. So what was she saying? Let's think about it. Did you get that right? Oh, good. You got that right. Oh, okay. Here, this is, I'm so glad this is not an issue of lines. This is an issue of control. See, my vulture used to squawk at me throughout an audition about the audition. Your vulture wants to be like, you know, that man and woman watching the Macy's Day Parade. And as the floats go by, they go, here's a float from, you know, this company. And look at those flowers. They're really good, you know? But so... My vulture no longer squawks about how the scene's going because I said over and over, I release in the storm, I need to control this scene. I'm not strong enough to control it. So I asked my higher power to lovingly guide me through it. And however it goes, it was meant to go, even if it's badly. So the scene is coming out the way it was meant to go. So there's no reason to double back and check. Was it, can I, should I, can I check the box of that line? Good. Can I, no, that's, see what's happening is it's keeping you from throwing away the words. Yeah. In real life, all these words just tumble out of our faces. I have no idea how I've said anything today. I have interesting thoughts, and then these words tumble out. And that's why when you act, you must also be willing to throw away the words. But you can't if you've got a vulture wanting to check boxes for each line. Did yeah. I get it out, and was it good? Okay, moving on. Yeah. You've got to say, look, if I fuck up, I was meant to, and it's fine. I can book this role if I fuck up a line or two. I don't care. But you can't book the role if you're unable to behave as if it's really happening because you're monitoring how the words come out. Yeah. You know, that's why yeah, you just throw away the words. They tumble out and hope they get stopped by something bigger than you. Yeah. Hope they get colored by something bigger than you. And one reason to get stopped is that you forget a line. That's a great reason to get stopped. But other than that, you just throw the words away. Okay. Because in real life, that's how we talk. <laughs> yeah. Anything else your vulture was saying? Anything else you want to share? No, I think that's it. Okay, so now acting coaches will say you, you're going into that audition with nothing but the work you put into the scene. The liars. You're going into that audition hand in hand with your racing heart that makes magic happen. Your racing heart plugs plugs me into my higher power, the magic of acting, and then I just go with it. Just go with it. Just see what happens. Okay. It's not a narrow hallway where I, that I'm racing down, where I've got to you know get these lines out correctly. It's I break those walls down. I see the scene as a big playing field where anything can happen. It's an improv about ordering a drink. It's an improv about getting to know a new a new employee. When you're somebody who's pretty comfortable around strangers. When you're somebody who isn't uh, a guest here, you sort of, you know, you belong here. Mm -hmm. When you're playing people who don't have anxiety, you really have to get rid of your anxiety or you won't be in her circumstances. So just multiply by a thousand how much you have permission to hate me and everyone. Put it in your belly. It will affect the scene in ways you don't need to even understand. And then it's an improv about being at a party when you're going to have a drink and get to know somebody. That's all. That's all, and you've done that many times. So take it from where you are. You're not even an actress. You're just here to be you and enjoy playing the circumstances. Here are the things I say right before a drama audition. I'm not gonna make any choices. More importantly, I'll allow them to happen. They'll be done nothing. So number two, the words, I'm just gonna throw all the words away. I have faith, I have the courage, so I have the words out the way. Number three, I hope everyone out there feels so fucking uncomfortable watching this, and I'll do that by taking care of it at all but instead of only being interested in my experience of behaving as if it's really happening. And lastly, the director just said to you, oh my God, Lisa, thank you so much for bringing in all those brilliant choices. They were perfect for the scene and I have them all on film perfectly and I'm gonna use them. Since we're done, I'm never gonna look at this take. You don't have to do any of that great stuff. I guess just behave as if it's really happening. Just wanna surprise yourself. Oh my God, take all the time you want and you have permission to do it badly. Who cares? I'll never look at this take. Here we go. Where's uh, the ecstasy crowd I'm supposed to schmooze with? Let's have a drink first. Um, two tequilas, please, no ice. 
I'm a big believer in um, substances <laughs> to, um, you know, to make people more receptive to a certain kind of personal work. So uh, sometimes it's Prozac, sometimes it's ecstasy, and sometimes it's blue agave. Cheers. So, what makes someone turn down a, a schizophrenia fellowship in Harvard to spend weekends in a stinky psyche R? I didn't, um, I didn't tell anyone about the fellowship. Well, we only get to hire new faculty once every couple of years, so I did my homework. <laughs> And I chose you. But the real question is, why did you choose us? Well, like I said this morning, Bellevue is hardcore. Oh, <laughs> but what, it, what is it about you that um, needs things to be hard? I didn't say hard, I, I, I said. So is it maybe, um, maybe the patients make you feel more sane by comparison, maybe? You have a hero complex. Maybe you just love puzzles that make you break your nose. Now, what exactly is your point? Every patient interaction is like a window into yourself. But sometimes you might not like what you see. Embrace that. <laughs> Use it to make yourself better. Okay, good. So, easier or harder? A lot easier. <laughs> More fun or less fun? More fun. Okay, yeah. I said a bunch of things to get your vultures to shut up. We didn't talk about the scene. We didn't rehearse it. I didn't send you out into the hallway to make notes about pre-planned thoughts, actions, or objectives. You got your vulture to shut up and you became a vessel for the scene. And it'll funnel through you different every time. But you got out of the way by getting your vulture to shut up. Now your vulture up until now has been able to get you with the things she said today, but now she won't. If you say to yourself, whatever I said to you that made your vulture shut up. Whatever yeah. I said to you that make you took all the pressure off yourself and have that beautiful experience in front of us. If I showed that back to you, you'd be like, oh my God, I don't remember doing any of that. But it was just one incredible, magical, spontaneous, unplanned moment after another. And I got to see who you are in these circumstances. First time I didn't get to see anything about Lisa. I was too busy seeing what you were gonna present to me so you wouldn't get in trouble. Yeah. I feel bad because I was actually saying that to myself, waiting, waiting, you know, I was saying the affirmations and everything, and I still just walked into the vulture. <laughs> you can't just say affirmations. The affirmations are said in response to something specific your vulture is saying. Okay. You can't just sort of say any affirmation and hope it maybe hits the target. Your no, but I mean, while I was listening and, you know, while I was listening I know, but to once the scene began, your vulture said, you know, our vulture is as smart as we are. And it yeah. will come up with brilliant things to say. And once it doesn't get away with saying the big, loud, mean ones, like you're a terrible actress, it whispers the subtle things that don't make us feel anxiety, but make us feel pressure. Yeah. And we yeah. know that your vulture, you let your vulture say stuff about how is this coming out and am I getting these lines out? So yeah. next time you do an audition, make sure to say, I release in the storm, I need to control the scene, however it goes, it was meant to. And I don't care how the lines come out, I'm throwing the words away. I don't wanna know how they come out. However they come out, they were meant to. There's a higher plan unfolding for me for my greatest good. Don't kick yourself, just practice the affirmations all day whenever your vulture squawks and you'll know she squawked because you'll feel bad. And that's how you just get in practice of, of, of taming your vulture so that when you get to the audition, your vulture already knows who's in charge. Thanks. Beautiful work. That was a stunning audition. Thank you so much.
Yeah, you'll, you'll see. Okay. Um, up next is, let's see, I got to look at my list. Who's that actor? That bad actor is Valerie. Hello, Valerie. Oh, let me just uh, do this real quick. Um, no problem. Let me I'm right I'll here. tell people about the yeah, scene you're doing. Valerie. Hi. Valerie. Hi there. How are you? Good, good. Just trying to fit into the box. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we <all. laughs> this is a drama scene Valerie's doing. And the police have asked Valerie, it's from Cold Case, and the police have asked um, her to come in and talk to them about a woman that she used to work with. They don't suspect you. They're hoping that, it's, that maybe some information you give might help them with this cold case uh, murder that happened, okay? okay? So you had the first line, so I'll let you begin whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, I always knew something might have happened. Donna just wouldn't take off like that. She loved that kid. And you were babysitting Marissa the day she disappeared? We were good friends in high school. I dodged a baby bullet myself, but I figured I could help out as much as I could. Were there any guys she was involved with at the time? Um, dating was kind of a hassle for her with the kid and all. She was struggling to make it on her own. Any idea why she might have entered a bank account the night she disappeared? Um, say that again? Any idea why she might have emptied her bank account the night she disappeared? Oh, uh, no. I wasn't really there much either. Donna didn't even have two nickels. Well, did she owe anybody? Maybe somebody named Kimball? Uh, it wasn't like that. She, you know, she didn't borrow. It was a real blow to her when she had to move back in with her mom wouldn't wish that on anyone, that woman. Good, let's stop the scene there and talk about your experience of it. Did, uh, did anything come up that you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking about? Um, I think I was squawking a little bit about um, the, like where to look, um, cause I was looking right into the camera and I don't, I was squawking whether I should be looking at you, Jack, or, you know, because we're in this Zoom thing. And I was like, my squawking, like, I hope I'm looking in the right place. Because I see and obviously you. Obviously, the character yeah. isn't thinking about whether she's looking at the right place. And that's why you always want to make the person you're auditioning with, make them right. a partner in the scene with you. And so what I would recommend is that you'd always okay. want to, before you do the audition, to say, uh, where would you like me to look or does it matter where I look? And that way you, this wouldn't happen. You know, in a real audition, you might ask, is it okay if I sit or can I sit and then stand up? But they like being made a partner in your audition. They don't mind. Oh, it right. Yeah. Cause so it was normal. I would look at you, but I'm just wondering with the zoom auditions, if that is different so that I think that's my question. I never look at the camera. I always look at the reader, but with that's a fine. zoom audition, um, I, that's what I wondered. That's there what's is, walking. Well, it's like, important that you know that there is no right way to act and every casting director might say something different. So really probably mm -hmm. what I'd just say is what do you want to do and do that and ask me if, I, if I'm okay with that. And I'm going to say, I don't care where you look because I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. It was yeah. squawking. <laughs> yeah. Anything else your vulture was squawking about besides where you should look? Um, not, not really. I, I felt like I squawked a little because sometimes it's hard to hear and there's a delay, but um, I like that. I said, what was that again? You know, and made it part of the scene. And, you know, when I couldn't, cause uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to hear with this sound. Okay. Okay, good. Well, you know, the, the issue was that, you know, um, you want you want it. Uh, you want to not make any choices in a drama audition. In other words, they should feel like, did she start the scene, or are we acting now, or is like, did the scene even begin? And the thing is, I just really could tell. Okay, the scene has begun. You know, right, right. And that's because you got involved in things that we don't get involved in in real life which was you were muscling moments mm -hmm. to sort of show what's going on in the scene. 
you were coloring right. and delivering lines, which in real life we don't. Words just fall mm -hmm. out because we uh, we're too busy coming up with the words to to share them and deliver them and color them. And wow. you were just getting involved in showing what the scene would look like, which was making me feel very comfortable watching it. But okay. I don't want to feel comfortable watching a drama audition. The audience wants to feel very uncomfortable and tense, like they're kind of eavesdropping on something they're not supposed to even be watching. And yeah. it should be hard to watch a woman being forced to talk about her friend that disappeared and maybe was murdered. But if you're involved in things that actors get involved in, like take care of the scene, it, it's going to make you the actor comfortable and it's going to make your audience comfortable, which then will just be boring. So Got it. You yeah. do to make the audience or yourself comfortable in a drama audition is the antithesis of booking the job. That's why you can say, I hope right. you feel fucking uncomfortable watching this and I'll do that by not taking care of the scene at all. But instead and only being interested in my experience of behaving as if this is really fucking happening. This isn't a scene that I'm gonna sort of do or dip my toe in. I'm gonna take ownership of these circumstances and say, holy shit, I'm gonna really do an improv about being asked to come to a police station to talk about my friend that is hard to even think about her because then my mind starts thinking, was she murdered? Is she alive? Yeah. What, did she suffer? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess so. Yeah. So she, when she's coming in, does she, she just knows she's missing. She doesn't know everything that happened or she does. I don't think she knows the details of what happened, but you you said yourself, she would never have left her daughter. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't think she knows her friend was murdered. I think okay. she knows it's a cold case and that she disappeared. Yeah. Okay. So I want yeah. to do the exercise I love because it gets rid of them. Now, again, it wasn't a bad audition because you were behaving as if it's really happening, but for a drama audition, you were making too many choices. So right. I want to do the exercise that gets rid of the moment when the scene begins and you're under pressure to act. So I'll just talk to you about your life. It's a selfish exercise for you to remember how you really think and communicate. In the middle of us talking, I'll say, start the scene. And I don't want you to look at the script when you start the scene and you're gonna remember you're in a scene. Instead, when I say start the scene, I want you to jump right in, bring right with you into the scene how you really think and communicate so that I can't tell the scene began. Yeah. In order to do this exercise, you gotta let go of any way you ever thought to say the words. And we already saw that anyway. And Got instead it. just see what, what happens. So here we go, when you were younger, this is for you to remember how you really think and communicate, what were some street names in the neighborhood you grew up in? The st street names of people? Um, street names in the, your neighborhood. Um, st oh, street names, um, Collinwood Drive, uh, Woodbourne Road, uh, Bay Breeze Drive, Bay Breeze. The Bay name of your schools that you went to? I went to Carver Elementary, First Colonial High School. Uh, Are you went... able to lean back in your chair? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, good. Because I, I always recommend to make that your home base. You know, if you want to scoot the chair closer to the camera, that's fine. But I, I prefer if you lean back. That's how most people sit in chairs. Got and um, who was a teacher that meant a lot to you? Um, a teacher that meant a lot to me was my third grade teacher, Mrs. Martine who, because um, wow. um, she made me feel special and I was bullied in third grade. And so, it, was yeah. there a friend that you lost touch with that you were sad that you lost touch with them? Uh, from childhood? I, yes, Christy Ray, very much. So I've been, I always tried to find her, but I can't find her. When you think of her face, the last time you saw her, where do you see her? When we're riding bikes together on on uh, on Chauncey Lane, which is where she lived. We lived caddy quarter to each other. Uh, it was, um, I always knew something was gonna happen. Um, she, Donna wouldn't run away like that. She loved that kid. You were babysitting the kid, Marissa, when she disappeared? We were good friends in high school, um, but, uh, I dodged the baby bullet myself, but I always figured I could help her out, you know, as much as I can. Were there any any guys that she was involved with at the time? D dating was a hassle for her with the kid and all. She was really struggling to make it on her own. Well, do you have any idea of why she might have emptied her bank account the night she disappeared? No. It couldn't have been much. Donna didn't have two nickels. Well, maybe she owed somebody. Maybe somebody named Kimball? 
I, it, it she wasn't like that. Um, she, you know, she she hated borrowing. Uh, she it was a real blow to her when she moved in with her mother. Uh, and believe me, I uh, I wouldn't wish that woman on anyone. And you worked with her at the dealership. I helped her get a job as a greeter. I, I quit myself. I hated it. Um, Donna was tough. She could handle those jerks way better than me. <laughs> Salesman hidden on her. Bunch of sexist sharks. I never understood why she wanted to swim in that tank. Found her body in the trunk of a 73 Eldorado. Do you know no no drove that car? No. I couldn't tell a K car from a Corolla. But I'm gonna stop you there and ask you, uh -huh. was that easier than the first time or harder? So much easier. Was it more fun or less fun? It was a blast. Well, that's the great thing about this workshop is whenever actors have a beautiful adjustment and that my dear, blew my socks off, <laughs> you know is great. The actors always say it was easier and more fun. So I guess that means acting's easier and more fun than you thought. And right. if it's better and it's easier, that means it's not better because we worked hard on it or you learned some new acting technique. No, if it's better and easier, that means it's better because you actually stopped being involved in things you don't need to be involved in that were making your acting harder and not as good, which was anything your vulture was squawking about, because I think you'll agree that time you had zero vulture squawking, right? Zero. Oh, and I didn't care about I mean, having up the words. Yeah, even. then here's yeah. how easy acting is. Next time your vulture squawks, just say no. I release and destroy my need for anything you're saying. Even if what you're saying sounds totally true, I release and destroy my need to remember any of these words or whatever it is your vulture is saying. And then you'll do what you just did so beautifully and so well, my dear. And again, being surprised by a thought or feeling in front of a rolling camera is great acting and it's what books work. Mm -hmm. And so it was so exciting for us to watch you be surprised by those images or concepts that created those deep wells of sadness for you. Mm -hmm. and, so, and this is why, in, and this is, you know, important because what meant a lot to me is that um, I always do comedy and, and I, and you, and, and you were so lovely in offering the comic scenes and I almost took it, you know, I almost took Heidi, <laughs> uh, but I was really pushing to, to be able to do something different than I normally do. Cause well, I know it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful audition because your vulture wasn't squawking. You weren't making the choices, but instead they were happening to you. You weren't coloring the words or delivering them, but instead you were receiving gifts of interesting line readings from the universe, from the situation that was surprising you. And we felt very uncomfortable watching it because you weren't taking care of it. But instead you were just having a rich, selfish, emotional experience in front of us. Because mm -hmm. everyone out there, our job at an audition is not to show what the scene will look like. It's to discover one of the many ways the scene could look. Right, right. Very good work. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Take thank care. You. Up next, we have Eric. Hello, Eric. How are you? Hello. You're I'm on mute. Hey, good. Thanks for having Hi. me. Of course, thanks for coming. You're doing a drama scene today, which is uh, yeah. the role of John. That's right. And for everyone out there, this is an AA meeting room. And John, uh, the group leader, approaches uh, somebody that he's been sponsoring to let her know that she's ready to sponsor somebody. So um, you have the first line. So I'll just let you begin whenever you're ready. Okay. Hey, Macy, that was really good advice you gave Roberta. Well, thanks, John. I hope I wasn't out of line. No, no, you were right on the money. It's a high compliment coming from you. <laughs> so these next few days are going to be crucial for Roberta. And she's going to need a sponsor. Yeah, I was, I was going to talk to you about that. She, she needs somebody good like you. Well, my plate, my plate's pretty full. 
But um, you're right. She does need someone good. And that's why I wanted to know if you'd be willing to do it. Me? John, I'm still in recovery. We're all in recovery, Macy. And you've been sober for several years. I think you're ready to be a sponsor. Serious? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Sobriety is the most important thing in my life, next to my husband. Yeah, I'd, I'd be honored to be Roberta's sponsor. Great. Well, there's one thing I need to mention, Macy. You told Roberta that you need your husband to help you stay straight. Yeah, it's true, I well, do. It may appear that way, but make no mistake. You're the one who is responsible for your sobriety. Okay, good, good, very good. Let's stop there. So yeah. what's your experience with that? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was saying? Um, well, I just noticed a lot of eye movement and um, uh, kind of dryness uh, in, my, in my throat and in my chest. Um, uh, and I wasn't taking you in as much as Macy as I, as I wanted to, like a lot of my, like I, my homework was looking at your face and seeing Macy so that when we got here, I would know you as Macy. And I found my attention was more on my experience as opposed to connecting with you. I'm really glad to hear that because that's real life. In real life, our experience is 100% our shit. Mm -hmm. It's an acting class thing to make the scene about your scene partner because it's just not the way we really live our lives, in my opinion. I believe mm -hmm. that film acting is so selfish because it's a mirror of real life. And in real life, we are so, you know, we see a friend and we're like, oh, hey, but we're just as much thinking about the fact that we have to get our laundry done and that our toe hurts. We're not, we don't see a friend and go, there's my friend. I want to say hi to him. I better get connected to her. But come now I really see you. Now you really see me and we're sharing. <laughs> not how we really live. So I'm happy to hear that you didn't. Yeah. Also, my two words for acting are faith and trust. So mm -hmm. I don't need to believe you're John. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see John. Mm -hmm. I have faith you're John. I, have, I trust that I may see I have mm -hmm. faith I'm in an AA meeting room. I, the walls are never going to melt and you're really going to be in a meeting room. Mm -hmm. You have faith you are. You're not really. It's all fake. Right. But um, once you realize that you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to create this world and make it real, then what happens is your hands aren't over here worrying about building a real world. Your hands are here instead, open in front of you to receive gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gifts of interesting thoughts, feelings, concepts, images, aligned with actually being in the circumstances. So I would recommend that you don't feel any responsibility to see Macy, and instead you just have faith on Macy. Anything you do in your, anything an actor does in their acting that doesn't sound like faith or trust, you could just get rid of because it's not actually helping you. That's my opinion. Okay. okay. So you said... Great. I be, so I asked you if what was your experience and you said you felt a dryness to which I'd say, oh yeah, sometimes you're gonna feel a dry throat because yeah. when your heart's racing, you might get a dry throat. That's right. fine, we can't tell your throat is dry. And just say, if my throat's dry, so is his. I have faith mm -hmm. that his throat is dry, my throat is, you know? Whatever mm -hmm. I'm feeling, he's feeling. I don't need to be somewhere else. I'm just yeah. gonna take it be... where I am. Right. However I'm feeling, and if it, right now it's dry, is a fine place to do this scene. It'll just color the scene in some new and interesting way. Mm -hmm. Next time I do the scene, I can have a sip of water and I'll do the scene with a wet throat. Who gives right. a shit? It's not going to make the scene better. Yeah. yeah. Then you said, I became aware of eye movement, to which I'd say, that's because our vulture wants to comment on how the scene is going. And yeah. that makes behaving as if it's really happening very difficult. Mm -hmm. So instead, just go, look, eyeballs, it's an improv. You're part of it, too. Wherever you want to look is fine. But eyeballs, right. you don't have to make choices. If we, we, don't, we don't have to make any choices because nothing is better than putting something there. But just trust, look, wherever my eyes go is where they were meant to go. I release yeah. in the storm. I need to control the scene because I'm not strong enough to control it. Mm -hmm. When I try, it just hurts it. 
So right. instead, I'll just ask my racing heart or my higher power to lovingly guide me through it. And however it goes, it was meant to go. So if my eyes do that, they were meant to. Great. Mm -hmm. That's one of the many ways the scene could look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anything else your vulture was saying? Um. Other than you're not doing that thing you planned where you were going to focus and see Jack. Other than that, was there anything your vulture was saying? Um. Yeah, it was like, um, oh, it uh, doesn't feel like I'm in the place of um, John as leader. I, it's like I got smaller yeah, than who I knew. I, what? Say it again. I, I, I um, was moving too fast to let myself drop into being John as the group leader. Oh, okay, 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 felt, okay. Just so you know. Yeah. You're speaking a lot of acting class verbiage that in my opinion is fear-based and result-oriented. Well, okay. And so, sure. okay. I mean, so I'm just showing with you that yeah. those teachers, even if, even if things they said to you help you, and I'm sure they did, you're now using their words to beat yourself up. No, so, no, so, no, so, so, so let's be clear. These are my experiences and it doesn't come from the teaching that i've had the teaching has all been oh. a, has been very much like uh what okay. you're I'm just saying, hearing a lot of the way people talk in acting class yeah about no dropping i'm just in. that's just my own that's me okay that's the shit that i'm trying to get you. rid of it's fine to it's fine to think it before you act but if you're thinking about your what some you believe is the right way to act while you're acting it makes it hard to behave as if it's really happening so obviously you'd want to say Sure, I want to drop in, but I release in the storm. I need to drop in. That way, while mm -hmm. you're acting, your vulture can't go, you aren't dropped in. Mm -hmm. You see? So I release in the storm. I need to be dropped in. Right. I mean, I already know because I've seen today in this workshop how when the actor doesn't know their next line, it's like the best moment of the audition because I get yeah. to see a human thinking about what they're going to say. Is that dropped in? Right, right. right. The answer is yes, because we're always mm -hmm. dropped in. But when our vulture squawks, we feel like we're not dropped in. So just say, I release in a storm, I need to be dropped in. Also, I release in a storm, I need to be John, because there mm -hmm. is no John. John is me in John's specific set of circumstances. Right. Now, you have a desire to be a group leader, to which I'd say, fine, just have faith you're the group leader, because guess what? Every group leader is different. Did you know there are group leaders who are very shy and stutter and stammer? And then mm -hmm. there are group leaders who come in and go, okay, everybody, let's get started. Hmm. So you'll be the group leader you were meant to be in that time. You're yeah. allowed to have faith that you are not a, in a place that makes you anxious, that you're in a place you feel comfortable. That's one of the experiences of a group leader. Mm -hmm. But there's no particular kind of group leader. If you just say I'm a group leader, it's true. That's the great thing they don't tell you about acting is if you say it, it's true. So if I say I'm a rodeo clown, it's true. I don't have to do anything to earn yeah. it unless All I start right. thinking, oh, shit. I haven't done enough homework about how rodeo clowns live their lives. And then we're covered in anxiety and we're like, I'm a rodeo clown. And then, then we really don't seem like a rodeo clown because we have so much anxiety about it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I thought it was a nice audition, but I could tell your vulture was squawking. More importantly, I could tell that you had responsibilities around the concept of acting that you were still utilizing. And I don't think you need to. Yeah. So I want to I want to do the exercise that gets rid of that moment when we're okay. under pressure to deliver. So Great. I'm just going to talk to you about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate because acting in a drama is a mirror of real life. Anything we get involved with in, that we wouldn't be involved in in real life, you can just not bother with because, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you about your life so you can remember how you really think, communicate in the middle of us talking. I'm going to say start the scene and without looking at the script. I want you to just come right yeah. in with that was very good advice you gave her. But, but the goal is to bring right into the scene how you really think and communicate so that they can't tell the scene even began. Got it. And to do let, that, me, let me ask a question. Are, are you asking questions about Eric's life or, or, or my life as John? Eric's life. Because okay. you don't have a life as John, uh, in my opinion. But once the scene begins, you'll have faith your John. Okay. okay. Now, the only, and I only say that because I didn't give you a whole script. So there's nothing you need to know. If, if there was things you need to know, we would have talked about it. But John is okay. just, he's a good guy. He's an AA sponsor. 
and he's been helping this woman and he's letting her know that she's had so much growth, it's her turn to help people. Yeah. That's all you need to know. Anything past that, I wouldn't plan because it's not in the script. So just know anything past what I just talked about, which are the literal circumstances, will be a delicious surprise that will come to you in the performance. Okay. Because uh, acting's an art that happens while we're acting, not the night before yeah. when we're doing a bunch of paper homework that you don't have to do. So okay. again, I'm talking to you about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate. So you can bring that right into the scene so that we can't tell the scene began. I want you to let go of any way you thought to do the scene because we already saw that anyway. And just go, look, I'll just be surprised. We'll see how it comes out. Okay. Whatever, whatever happens. Great. When you were younger, did you ha have any hobbies that you enjoyed? Um, yeah, I played instruments. Like which one? What was the first one you enjoyed? Um, well, I played the bassoon. Where did you pick this up? Why bassoon? Um, I really don't know. It, it seemed, you know, odd enough and no one else was picking it. Um, and I was a short kid and it was actually taller than me. When Did uh, you ever have a teacher playing. that taught you music that meant a lot to you? Um, yeah, I did. I did. Who was it? Uh, Sal LaRusso. And how did it feel to be working with him? Um, I felt like uh, I had it going on and he Start cared about scene. me. What's that? Start the scene. Yeah, so um, that was yeah. really good advice you gave Roberta. Oh, thank you, John. I hope I wasn't out of line. No, 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 it was right on the money. Well, that is a high compliment coming from you. So, you know, the next few days are gonna be critical for her. And uh, yeah. she's going to need a sponsor. Yeah, somebody really good. Somebody like you. <laughs> well, my plate's pretty full. But you're right. She does need someone good. And that's why I'd like to know if you'd be her sponsor. Me? John, I'm still in recovery. We're all in recovery, Macy. And you've been sober for several years. And I think you're ready to be a sponsor. Um, you're serious? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Sobriety is the most important thing in my life next to my husband. John, I'd be honored to be Roberta's sponsor. Great. Well, there's one thing, Macy. You told Roberta that your husband was critical in keeping you straight. It's true. I do need him. Well, may appear that way, but don't get me wrong. I'm gonna stop there, good. What's your experience of that? Anything you wanna share about your experience of doing it at that time? Oh, it was much smoother, authentic. You know, it felt like we were actually having the conversation. Okay, um, again, if I seem nitpicky on the way actors describe their experience, it's because your thoughts create your reality. And so you wanna be careful how you um, speak to your reality because Actors use words that end up making acting harder and, and full of ways to fail. Okay. So um, I think another way to put what you just said, and again, could you repeat the, the three things you said? It felt uh, well, like you were having a real conversation. It felt authentic felt like, and it felt... I, smoother because I didn't hear the squawky stuff. Smoother. We were just okay. in the space. Okay, yeah. good, good. Okay, so um, you said smooth and authentic. Those are the two words that are dangerous. Is another way to put that is, is another way to put that, that time I felt more like I was behaving as if it's really happening. Yeah, for sure. And oh, I was, well, yeah, so I was less interrupted so by kind of so actor important. stuff. Here's why it's so, I love you saying that because that's the definition of acting. Uh -huh. And that's the, that sentence you'll hear me say over and over again because it's literally the definition of acting and it's so damn easy mm -hmm. to behave as if it's really happening. But teachers want us to break the concept of behave as if it's really happening into a thousand different subcategories. Like really listening, really seeing, is it authentic? Is it organic? Is it connected? And, and they do that to keep us in their class because it makes acting harder. Well, so what I'd say that. is, <laughs> I can't hear you. And uh, so anyway, what I'd say is obviously life isn't smooth. So we don't mm -hmm. need it to be smooth. 
and that's not even what you were saying. What you were really saying is, and when you described it, you said my vulture wasn't squawking, to which I'd go, fantastic. I've already shared today that that's the only thing we should be worried about when we act is getting our vulture to shut up. So why talk about a thing called smooth? Then you use the word authentic. And let me just say again, release and destroy, you need to be authentic because it will never be authentic because what the fuck does that even mean? Acting's fake. You have faith you're in an AA meeting room. How do you authentically make that happen? Could you imagine if you're at an audition and you're about to go in and test for a series regular role and you go, okay, I got to go in there next and be authentic. You'd be like, oh my God, you'd be freaking out. But if you look at that audition door and say, okay, I have to go in there next and I want to behave as if it's really happening, you'd go, oh, okay, I can do that. That's easy. So that's well, why that's I recommend I mean, that's that. That's what I mean by authentic. I mean, I cared people, about what you were saying and I was well, responding I mean, like a person. You, yeah, absolutely. People, I'm sorry, if I'm talking quickly, it's because I can only have a certain amount of time with people. People, if I say, I don't mean to be brusque with you because I do realize that people use certain words to mean a certain thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for you, when you say authentic, it doesn't mean what I say when I when I say authentic. Mm -hmm. But I'm just using the time I have with you to explain Fair why enough. I'd recommend you don't use the word authentic, because it is a trap, that word, in my opinion. Now, you can keep using it if you keep using it to mean the thing you mean, which is behave as if it's really happening. But it's a tricky thing because, look, authentic means something. Even if you're using it to mean something else, smooth means something, even if you're using it to mean something else. And what it means is a quality and a result. And any quality or result is your enemy because your vulture speaks in the language of qualities and results. So anyway, that was a beautiful audition. It was so great because I could tell you had no responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And because you didn't have any responsibilities, it made behaving as if it was really happening very easy. Um, you know, I stopped you because you gave me a moment that you had given me the first time. Now, it wasn't that the moment was bad. It was a fine moment. It was a little improv about checking to see where, where other people are. And I don't mind that is because you were be still behaving like it's really happening. It's just we're, we were running out of time. And to me, it felt a bit like going back to your responsibility to take care of the scene. And what I, I was loving so much was up until then, you had no responsibility to take care of the scene. And so it just felt so spontaneous until that moment when, when, when you gave me what I consider to be almost a bit of a dead gift of your idea how maybe something you should do during the scene that would look good. However, you did make it look good. When you see it played back, you're going to go, no, that's perfectly fine to that. I agree. It's just that seemed like a nice place to stop because it's where, in my opinion, you stopped just doing what I call I call drama acting, jumping out into darkness and trusting a net will catch you. And you did that beautifully. Mm -hmm. So very good work. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Okay. Up next, we have... Here we are, Margaret. Because <laughs> uh, your email isn't Margaret. I, these glasses are so cheap that just by taking them on and off, they fell apart. So I'm going to, oh, well, I'll just put them. Okay, so um, you're doing a scene of, called, her name is Jillian Parks, mm -hmm. and Jillian runs a trashy tabloid magazine. Yep. And uh, she's, like, in charge at this magazine, and she is um, meeting a friend of hers, an old friend she hasn't seen in a while, at a very expensive L.A. restaurant called Dan Tana's. Mm -hmm. And again, to, this is a drama. Okay. Since you have the first line, I'll let you begin whenever you're ready. Okay? okay. All right. Sebastian, it's so nice to see you again. Look great, Jillian. Personal trainer? Botox. So Whisper seems to be doing well. Scandal's a growth industry, but let's face it, there's no, it's boring with the legal celebrity thing uh, ever since you cleaned your act up. Sorry to let you down. <laughs> uh, let's see, Cochran's gone, Shapiro's pimping a new website. Um, and I don't know what's gonna happen to this legal celebrity thing. <laughs> well, Spectre was good copy. Uh, how many uh, hair shots can you run? Wacky hair shots can you run? Uh, I think what we need in this town is a good new OJ. 
Two people died in OJ, remember? Your um, murder investigation sounds really interesting. Up and coming rocker kills his best friend. I smell money. Well, actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm not giving up any of my sources. You know that. An innocent kid. Okay, let's stop there. Good. What's your experience of that? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking about? Yeah. Um, I think my vulture was squawking about, like, um, try to be the powerful woman, you know, or... or um, interesting or charming or whatever, like charm the guy. And then I just felt like my vulture was like, yeah, but you're not being Peggy charming. So you're not know. being what charming? Like myself when I try, you know, when I'm charming or ha I'm having fun, like when I'm having fun or like maybe getting at something. Okay. So I, I, think, you know, I think a vulture is squawking about choices. Squawking about what about choices? And trying to control the scene. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, definitely, that's what our vulture does. It tries to convince you that your job is to show what the scene would look like in the finished product so that you can't do what acting is, which is just behave as if it's really happening and see what happens. It right, doesn't want right. you to approach it like the ninth take, so it keeps saying things that make you feel a responsibility to show what the scene would look like, hoping you'll fall for it. Right. So you said she said, oh, God, I can't remember now. You said a bunch of things. What was she saying again? You said, well, go through them in order. Um, what she said about, she goes, you can't, I'm not going to give you up my sources. I what was your vulture them. saying? Oh, cause I can't remember all the things you said. Oh, Go back um, to the first thing, what name, all the things your vulture was squawking about. Do you recall the first thing you said when I asked that question? You no, know, like have fun. Be interesting. I think I'm pretty sure my vulture was saying that. And like, uh, yeah, have fun. Rather okay. than trust. I release and it and destroy my need to have fun. You have to understand something. Your vulture isn't saying the truth. It's saying what she knows you'll currently listen to. And currently, if you hear your vulture say, have fun, you'll go, oh, yeah, you're right. I should have fun. Right. But it makes you feel a pressure and responsibility to have fun. So it's not your true loving voice talking. It's your vulture, the half of you that right. wants you to fail. So just say, I release and destroy my need to have fun. Who says she's having fun? There might be parts of this scene where she's having fun, but you don't want to look for an answer to the scene and then layer a quality of having fun over the whole scene. There is no right. answer to the scene. It's constantly changing in every moment, just like life. When you lay right. a quality or a beat or an action or a, a quality or a result over even one line, you can't get in touch to the moment yep. to moment fleeting thoughts, feelings, and impulses that happen in the span of even one line. Yep. So... Be charming, fuck charming. You know what's charming? Somebody without a vulture. That's what's charming. Isn't that fascinating? So if you've got a vulture saying be charming, you can't be charming. Because guess what? You are charming. Every human is fucking fascinating and charming when they don't have a vulture, when they're not covered with anxiety due to a vulture squawking. So to play Jillian, a much better circumstance to put in your belly than charming, which by the way, Charming is not a circumstance you can do anything with. It's a quality and result you're putting in your head. So which makes you feel a responsibility right. to, be, to show charming to the audience. One of the circumstances I would put in my belly for charming is I have nothing. I need nothing from you. And I'm glad to see you. And I've had half of a sip of a martini and I'm relaxed because I'm not at work right now. And I used to do get up to some monkey shines with you. And we have memories we share together. These are right. circumstances I put in my belly, throw them away, I'm not stupid, I'm not gonna forget them, and just let them affect the scene the way circumstances do. Okay. You're enough, you are enough. Because the great thing about Jillian is if you just say I'm Jillian, I run a magazine, a, a, a tabloid magazine, it's true. Everything about you is pouring out of you. You're, f you're fucking fascinating because you share everything in common with every other human. And there's no correct way that a woman who runs a, fla a fashion tabloid magazine is. But we do get the sense from our scene comprehension that she's somebody who knows she looks pretty dang good, right? 
because you look good. Botox, we know she cares about the way she looks. We know she has money. So what I would do is put in your belly that you're wearing a very expensive and beautiful cream pantsuit. You know, put that in your belly. How does it make you feel? Who cares? We'll see in the scene. She does not, we, we, we can tell that she's not somebody who's worried about how she looks. So just have faith that you're wearing a fantastic outfit. You don't have to show us that. Right. Does all this kind of help get your vulture to shut up so that you yes. can just see what happens? Yes. Here's something I want to share with you. I thought it was a very nice audition, but here's the thing. In that beautiful moment when it's time to receive your line, you think we can read your mind and we can tell that you're trying to remember your line and it makes you break character. But right, yeah, I had the vulture line. I had the vulture line guy too. I know. Just say, <laughs> tell you, let me show you again what it looks like when a character, now most people, when they forget a line, they go like this. They go, if this is my script, they go, I can't leave my wife. Um, she needs me and so do the kids. Now here's if I just stay up and you're going to see how an audience projects on me while I try to remember the line. I can't leave my wife. She needs me and so do the kids. So isn't that moment amazing? It's the best moment of your audition. So in that silence, just have the understanding, oh, they're projecting fascinating things on me because it's your lack of understanding that that's making you go, oh, well, this is a wasted moment because they can see I'm just trying to remember the line and it makes you break character. Right. So just right. look at me or look away and know, oh, they're projecting fascinating things on me while I think, what the fuck is my next line? You see? <laughs> And it's going to make them feel uncomfortable and it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. And that's how we want to feel watching a drama, right? If you want to look up, you can, but you don't have to. Right. There's nothing wrong with looking up when you don't know a line, but remember the camera's your friend. And if your eyes are up here, we can't see you. Right. So you could look at the reader, you can look away, you can look up but it doesn't need to be this. You're doing that because you think, oh God, nothing's happening in the scene, so I might as well leave the scene and just go get this fucking line. I'm such a waste of human flesh, <laughs> you know? So just trust. Right. They're projecting fascinating things on me and I'm gonna take all the time I want because when I'm acting, time speeds up. So what feels like five seconds of dead air is like one second has gone by. Right. So we're gonna talk about your life to get rid of the moment when the scene begins and you're under pressure to act. And then I'll okay. say some affirmations, we'll go into the scene. When you were younger, what was something in your bedroom that meant a lot to you? My quilt, my app. Uh, Why did you love the quilt? Because my mom made it. Yeah? And when you were yeah. younger, was there a band or a performer or a movie that you thought was so cool? Oh, God, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone. Why did you love that? Because he was hot. And um, uh, Robert Redford, I had a picture on my Where wall. In your wall. Where on the wall was the picture of Robert? It was on a cork board next to the right of my window. And what did and you see had... him that made you love him so much? Yeah, you just, where did I see him? Yeah, what movie made you love him so much? Oh, God, the way we were. Okay, so just take it from where you are, however you're feeling, however prepared you are as a fine place to begin. You're not even an actress. You're just here to be you and enjoy playing the circumstances. You don't have to make any choices. What a relief. And instead, you'll just see what happens to you, knowing that if nothing happens, that's great. The words you'll just throw away, have faith you have your thoughts and feelings, but the words you throw away, hope you forget the lines because that silence is needed. It's, it's an improv about thinking out loud. You don't know what you're going to say and you don't know what I'm going to say. Right. Hope that we feel so fucking uncomfortable watching it and you'll do that by not taking care of the scene at all, but instead just seeing what happens to you and know the director says, oh, I already have it. We're done. So I guess you don't have to do any of that brilliant stuff. Gosh, I guess just behave as if it's really happening. Just want to surprise yourself. Take all the time you want. And you have permission to 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 um, take uh, to do it badly. But when you were younger, or at any age, what is a dress that you wore that you loved because you thought you looked so hot in it? Um, a red dress with a red jacket and it flared Start the out. Scene. Start the scene. Okay, Sebastian, it's so nice to see you again. Looking good, Jillian. Personal <laughs> trainer. 
<laughs> Botox. Oh. So uh, Whisper seems to be doing well. Scandals of growth, you know, thing. But uh, really, let's face it, it's kind of boring with legal celebrity. So I don't know, ever since you cleaned up your act. Sorry to let you down. <laughs> uh, let's see, Cochran's gone. Shapiro's pimping a new website. <laughs> and um, let's see. What else? I'm going to give you a moment to look at these lines because I know you wish you knew them better. So just go and look at the first page. When you're looking at the lines, just know you're allowed to paraphrase. So that's why when we're looking at the lines, we're focusing on what the, the, the line means, the idea of the line, so that we could totally paraphrase if we have to. Because while okay. you want to get a word perfect, you don't fucking care if you do. So give yourself permission to fucking hate all these people and let go of the right. way you ever thought to do the scene. And who is an old friend you'd love to see? This is not for substitution. It's for you to remember how you really think and communicate. Who's an old pal right. from high school you had drinks with you like? Mary Beth Irwin. Start the scene. Sebastian, it's so nice to see you again. Looking good, Jillian. Personal trainer. Botox. Whisper seems to be doing well. Scandals, you know, it's a great growth opportunity, but let's face it, nothing's uh, alive in the legal Zoom lately since you cleaned up your act. Sorry to let you down. Cochran's gone, Shapiro's gone, and uh, it's just not the same without you. Spectre was good copy. How many times can you make a hair look good? Besides, I think what we need now in this town is a, a new OJ. Two people died in OJ, remember? This murder trial is very interesting. I mean, this up and coming rock star and he, uh, Killed his best friend. Look, actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. Okay, good. I'm not good, gonna. Good. Give away What's my your sources? experience of that? What's better. your experience of that? Feel good? Um, yeah, felt that better. That's definitely the best one felt yet. Boy, were you behaving as if it's really happening? You know, the goal yeah. is to do that yeah. the first time. To start there. Yeah, you know, it's like you've got to let go of a lot of responsibilities, a lot of vultures squawks. What? Yeah. Yep. Because you didn't have any vultures squawking. Yep. That's why you were able to behave so much like it was really happening. Because all that right. all that exercise does is it gets your vulture to stop squawking. It takes your mind off of the vulture telling you all these things you've got to do because you're acting now. Right. And now I can see who you are instead of your sort of dead idea of what the scene should look like, your dead gift you're giving us of here's how I think the scene should look. Now I can see you right. involved in hearing some things for the first time and then saying things for the first time. Right. Um, the issue is in your memorization, I want you to read my chapter on lines and, and the part where I talk about how to memorize because you're memorizing my guests not in a healthy way. It's making it harder mm. for you to remember the concepts of the lines, which makes it very difficult to throw the words away. Okay, you're probably right, yeah. Well, when you yeah. memorize, how, how, I mean, were you hearing line readings in your head as you memorized or? No, I, I recorded my voice and I just heard it over and over again. And then I would look at the line and then I would try to say it out loud 30 times and not get caught up in a yeah, way no, of saying this it. Is not, that's, this guess, is not memorizing. Yeah, um, definitely, yeah. Again, no, though, if something, if my, you guys my, out there have a way of memorizing and it's working for you and you like it, please keep doing it. But in my opinion, this is memorizing. And it's so simple. It's not about recording it and listening to it over and over again. It's not about reading the scene over and over again. It's not about saying the line over and over again. Because it's, yeah, that's just yeah. filling time. You're not actually memorizing. This is memorizing. I look at my first line. 
Okay, my first line is, I want to go to the park. Okay, now I'm going to look away and try to say the line. And as I'm saying it, I want to say it in a disinterested, monotone, robotic, rhythmic voice and put all my focus instead on what the words mean. And it looks like this. I want to go to the park. Good. I get what that line means. I could even paraphrase it. I get it. Moving on to the next line. Do you want to come? Okay, I'm going to say that. Now I'm going to say that one. Do you want to come? Now I'm going to try to say them both. I want to go to the park. Do you want to come? Now, great. Now I know the first two lines. Moving on to the third. And you, I only memorize for 20 minutes at a time. That's all your brain can handle. And every time you memorize, it's as if, and I don't do this really, but it's as if each line is almost like written on a post-it note. Don't really do this. But it's as if each time you memorize a line, you're sticking a post-it note to the wall. And then let's say right. in 20 minutes, you've got like eight lines posted to the wall. Go away, let your brain relax. While your brain is memorizing, while you're not even focusing on memorizing, come back. Now, only six of them are still stuck on the wall. But six are stuck on the wall. And then you re-memorize the two that fell off, and then you move on from there. So mem lines are never right. completely memorized. They're just kind of post-it notes stuck to the wall, and hopefully they all stick on the day of the audition. And if they don't, that's fine. You could paraphrase, or you could look down if you have to. So just read my right. chapter called Issues with Lines to make sure that you're focused, that, okay. that it's clear in your head what it means to focus on the meaning of the words as you're memorizing. But beautiful okay. work. That was a great job. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Did you have anything else you wanted to share? Um, yeah, I'm so glad you addressed that because, you know, I have the old lady remembering the line squawker. And so I, I, I just need to come up with a new way. And that's, and well, I mean, people I do think I'm putting this around. Don't I think I just really need like to spend a lot of time. Yeah, and then Again, I read your book. I'll no, it's not about how much time, and it's not a. It, it's it's the fact that the time you spend memorizing, you're not memorizing in a healthy way. Okay, I, I agree. And it's not that you're old and you can't memorize. Your vulture just wants you to think that. And exactly. uh, don't everybody out there do not write the lines on post-it notes. I don't do that. You don't have to do that. I don't even highlight or circle my lines. I like to write my lines on a separate piece of paper so that as I'm just my line, so that as I'm memorizing, I'm not looking at a script. A script will make give me anxiety. It'll remind me it's a scene and I don't want to think of it as a scene. I don't want right. to think about acting because I'm not acting, I'm memorizing. So we got to move on, but very good work. Thank you. Take care. Last one up is a rotten egg. Hi there, how are you? What's up, Jack? Nice to see you. You're so backlit. I can't see your expressions. Right, you let me see if I can, I can change this. Oh. I can change it. Let me go this way. <laughs> I have a whole setup in my office, so I can do either one. So let me see how I can do this. I didn't realize. That. Oh, I know why. I uh, still back there. That's hilarious. And there's no way to face one of those big white there. I mean, as, as long as you're facing the window, it's great, but maybe you don't want to have to hold your computer. I mean, even this is so much better because I can see half your face. That's weird. I, I've never had that problem. I'm, I always just face a window. Like to me, that's always going to be your best light. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm doing right now. And that's why I look so beautiful. Yeah, I was gonna put up my backdrop, and I was like, ah, I'll just leave it off. And but I was like, yeah. No, this is fine. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do a sitcom. We're gonna end out the day with a sitcom audition. Sitcom. And this is an audition to play like the lead of a sitcom. And Adam, the role you're playing, he's new to town, and he's just rented a desk in sort of a communal uh, workspace place. Right. And he, uh, as it says. It says, Adam walks in, sort of unsure where to go. He sees a young woman, attractive young woman, and it says he approaches. So you have the first line, so I'll let you begin whenever you're ready. Okay. And hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Adam. Um, so this is my first time at WeWork. So um, how does we work work? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, it's that you grab a desk and you do what you do. What do you do? I'm a cartoonist. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, thanks. So what, like animation stuff or? No, strip, cartooning, strip, strip cartooning. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not telling you to strip because you know we're in the workplace and I, and I just met you, so. Yeah, I usually like to know people a little longer before I strip for them. Oh, me too. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I'm like an old school cartoonist, you know, like one to four panels, you know, I, I have one based loosely on my life. It's called Bro, you probably heard of it. It's about a single guy living in Portland and um, it's which where I used to live, but my, you know, almost fiance didn't want to marry me. So I moved back here to Seattle and that's far more information than you wanted. So what, you're like the guy that draws Snoopy? Uh, that guy is super paid and, but he's not with us anymore, so, but yeah. So will you be in the Oregonian now? Cause I love the Sunday funnies. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm mainly online. Cause you know, newspapers are dying. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, online is where it's at. You know, I have like 40,000 followers, you know? So, you know, that's, that's really cool. So what, what do you do? I'm a newspaper reporter. Of course. I'm kidding. I'm a YouTube oh. star. Oh, funny. No, I'm serious. Good, good. Let's stop there. What's your experience today? Anything come up you don't care for? Anything your vulture was squawking about? No, I knew I, I missed some of the words, but I was like, it doesn't matter. Just keep going. Have fun. I, I think we can all agree we're never going to book a job because we said all the words right. Right. That's why you really lose job after job if you put getting it word perfect as the most important thing. Right. And that's, that's in your that. experience of behaving as if it's really happening. Playing right. And that's what I, I kept doing is just kept going and delayed and yeah. behaved. And I just, I just have fun because I was like, you know what? I know what the scene's about. I felt what the character's trying to do. He's trying to be cool. He's, he's trying to fit in. You know, she's pretty. So... And I just kind of went with all that and I just, I, I let it go. I let this be kind of like my ninth take and didn't, didn't worry about the outcome, okay. you know? So, and if they, so there was nothing your vulture was squawking about that you want to share? No, I mean, I, I was, I came in confident, you know, I've, I've been well, working. Well, confident is, I would definitely release in the story you need to be a thing called confident because yeah. acting is so uncomfortable. We've right. got our heart racing and butterflies in our stomach. And, and, so I, and I, I do just say, I have, what we want to do is have no vulture squawking, so right, that's what I mean. anxiety. That's what I mean. I had no vultures because I I do I do my affirmations all the time. Like did anything in particular feel better than usual based on the work you've been doing with the affirmations? Like if, for instance, is there something your vulture used to get away with saying that he couldn't do today that made it feel easier? I think my voice. They used to talk to me about my voice, and I had none of that today. Yeah. Um, and I and I felt like in this character being a lead of a show in a comedy and it's something that you've always told, you've always said, you just, you gotta let it go. You gotta, you gotta be free. And since I was, I had worked on my vulture so much about my voice, you know, after I met you the first time, I didn't have it even come up, you yeah. know? So, and I've been embracing it a lot more. And I think yeah. it's working for me so much more. Oh yeah. I can tell you were completely free of anxiety and that's why it was such a great audition. And uh, so I'm really proud of that. And that, that, uh, that was fantastic. And um, so it was a very good audition. I thought you had very good scene comprehension. And again, it was just delightful to see you just playing with no anxiety. Yeah. And uh, here's my, here's my, my note though. Um, especially when we're playing like the lead of a show, you really want to make sure you're allowing everything about yourself to come out mm -hmm. because you know, they want to know that we can spend seven years with you and that, right. and, and the good news is everything about you is pouring out of you every moment, as long as you approach each moment as if it's really happening. Right. See what you might be told is, well, we just want to see more of who you are and actors hate getting that note. Cause it's like, well, how do I do that? And the answer is that you even more approach every moment, like an improv. What that means is it's really happening mm -hmm. for the first time, which means you don't know what I'm going to say and you don't know what you're going to say and anything could happen. Right. These are just the words, but anything could happen in terms of thoughts, feelings, sound, movement, added words. And then you're the actor who's really taking a bite out of the scene. Now let me explain it in another way. Cause this was my experience a bit. It felt a bit like you were sort of, 
going down that narrow hallway. So what that means is that actors think their job is to say the words and say them well. I didn't feel like that was your issue, but in other words, they think it's about getting these words out. And because they think their job is to say the words and say them well, right. it's as if they're going down a narrow hallway. And because they're going down a narrow hallway and they're constricted by the, the walls of the hallway, they end up just sort of racing through the scene. And they're like, at the end of the scene, they're like, well, that was quick, how was I? But I want you to be the actor who breaks down the walls that you feel constrict you. And instead you see the scene as this big wide open playing field where anything could happen. Right. These are just the words, but anything could happen in terms of, as I just said, thoughts, feelings, sound, movement, you know? Right. You know, even right from the very first moment, there's a whole improv about walking in unsure of where to go. You know, and you skip that. Now you can skip that and book the job, but why not do it? Why not enact it? Because if anything, it will just let us see a bit of his vulnerability, which we right. didn't get much of his neurotic vulnerability. And, and that comes when you realize that you have no idea what you're going to say and that this is a scene about thinking out loud, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So fuck pace because sitcom is not about keeping it moving. It's about slightly higher stakes. He's not right. a guest star, so we don't need really high stakes, but in a comedy, you're tickling yourself with your own genuine human spontaneous behavior because humans are weird. So you're tickling yourself with your genuine human behavior when you don't know where to go, but you kind of, it's not like you don't know where to go. you like, you really don't know where to go. That's what makes sitcom style. Right. Also, she's not sort of cute. She's really cute. Put that in your belly. It will make more of your behavior come out of you. Wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah. you're allowed to act this from your eight year old self, the you that had no responsibilities and just didn't give a shit. Okay. okay, okay. And the director said, We already have it, so I guess this one's for you to just see what happens. I do want to talk for a moment about your life so you can remember how you really think and communicate, and then do release and destroy your need to be funny. But you are here to tickle yourself with your genuine human behavior when. You really think this girl's cute and you would not mind, you know, fucking her, but it's like you just keep saying the wrong thing, you know? It's not going great, you know? But who who does it go great for? Nobody, you know what I mean? Right. And, um, but anyway, when you were younger, like literally eight or nine, what were your hobbies or collections you had? Um, I rode a lot of my bikes. We did a lot of work on bikes. Was there, an, is there a collection you collected that's sort of embarrassing to talk about? Um, like I collected antique banks. How about you? Nothing in your bedroom? No, we, we, we were kind of poor, so we didn't really have a whole lot to How about, did you have an outfit that you thought might was cool? Oh, and yeah, like, I had a it. green outfit, like a green suit that I wore every Easter with brown shoes. And did like, you think oh, it was cool? Oh, it was the best thing ever. And it had a vest, it was green and white. It was like- Okay, was so fuck it. We're just gonna see what happens. Who cares? Take all the time you want and you have permission to do it badly. We'll just behave as if it's really happening. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. I'm Adam. Yeah, uh, um, it's my first time here at WeWorks. So, how does we we work? <laughs> okay, good, good, good. I'm gonna start you again because I don't want you to go back to any idea you had about the scene. Okay. Because because we saw them already, and it's going to keep you from discovering new things. Right. Yeah, and also. You know, it's just a stage direction. So literally it's like a step in is, is an improv about you being unsure of where to go. Okay. Because obviously you wouldn't want to take you wouldn't want to take that long because a lot of people are skipping it. Don't don't be the person who skips it. You know, I love that you're you're doing it. So why don't you just like step into this and then sit down when you come and start the conversation with with me? Okay. Okay, but listen, fuck it, you have permission to fucking hate us and who gives a shit? Right? Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> so here we go. Start. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm Adam. This is my first time here. We work. So, how does we work work? Well, you go. See, here's the thing. Sorry. I would love for you to trust that you're enough and your genuine, spontaneous human behavior is enough. Because this is because. Um, 
You're sending a message that your genuine human behavior isn't what's funny, but instead, you know what I mean? And I know that you think he's trying to be cool, but that's kind of what other teachers, how they approach it. They go, mm -hmm. they, they say things like, you're here for a reason. It's to affect your scene partner. So you want to come off as cool. So you're going to, your action is to make her think you're cool. It's like, no, none of that. You're, this is really happening. You don't know where to go. You are not asking a question. You're really fucking asking a question. And it says trying to be adorable on literally on WeWork work, but he's doing it on the fly. Meaning you have to want to do it on the fly. Meaning you have to let go of your way that you did it the other times or it won't right. really be on the fly. It'll be you trying to pretend it's on the fly. You understand? Yes. So take it from where you are and know that Hope you fuck up and start. Just start it. Take it from where you are. You're not even an actor. Here we go. Okay. Hey, I'm Hi. Adam. Madam, this is my first time that we work. So, and how does we work work? Sorry, sorry. No, no. It's just you. You, know, you grab a desk and you do what you do. Well, what do you do, Adam? Well, I'm a cartoonist. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. So what, like uh, animation stuff or? No, strip, cartooning, strip cartooning. I, I wasn't asking you to strip because we're, we're here in a workplace. I mean, and plus I don't know you, so I didn't, you know. Yeah, I usually like to know people a little longer before I strip for them. So. Yeah, me too. So so yeah, it's, it's you know, it's it's basically, a, a, I like one and four panel. Good, 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 Reggie. This is good stuff, but you still think you're smarter than what, the scene could deliver to you as a surprise if you more behaved as if it was really happening. Right, I see. For I some reason that. today, and I think it's because you think you're doing a sitcom and there's a way to do sitcom, but I'm getting, it's like there are quotes around everything. So you're not really yeah. asking me where you sit. You're asking me where you sit. And you're not really telling me what you do. You're telling me what you do. And so that's why I want to talk to you so you can remember how you really think and communicate. And then when we start the scene, just, see what happens, but no, all the delicious gifts come from behaving as if it's really happening. And then you're tickling yourself with your genuine human behavior. Right. What did you have for breakfast today? Cereal. Paleo. When you were a kid, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? An actor. And uh, when you were, was there anything else you want, thought you wanted to be when you were even younger? Uh, football player. What was your favorite uh, hobby? Football. Where? And on the basketball court, believe Why me. was it more fun on a basketball court? Because I can run fast. Well, you know, you, you grab a desk and you do what you do. Wait, Adam, what do you do? I'm a cartoonist. Oh, cool. Yeah. So what, like animation? Is that what you did? Oh, no, strip. I mean, strip cartooning. I strip cartoon is what I do. I mean, um, yeah, so, yeah, strip cartooning. I, I wasn't asking you to strip at all. I was just, you know... I, yeah, I usually, I usually like to know people a little longer, you know, before I do a little strip tease for them. You know, me too, me too. Oh, okay. So, but I usually like one to four panel cartooning, you know, I have one based loosely on my life. Um, it's called Bro. You probably heard of it. It's about a single guy living in um, Seattle and, you know, which is where I used to live. Oh. But my you know, ex-fiance or almost fiance, <laughs> almost fiance um, decided that she didn't want to marry me. So I moved back here to Portland and I know that's way too much information that you wanted. Well, so you're like uh, the guy who draws Snoopy? Oh, yeah, that guy is super paid though. And, but he's not with us anymore, which is really sad, uh, but yeah. So you're going to be in the Oregonian because I love reading the Sunday comics. Oh, uh, no, no. Um, mine is usually is mainly online because newspapers are dying right now. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Online is where it's at. I mean, it, it's really cool. I have like 40,000 subscribers. So yeah, it, it, it's really cool. So, and, and you know what, what do you do? I'm a newspaper reporter. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm a YouTube star. Oh, funny, funny. Cool. I'm serious. I have Vine Star and Vine's got bought out to make videos of me like tripping. People love it. I have 3 million followers. So I just grab any desk then. Huh? Okay, so Reggie, <laughs> you know, you know now you're behaving as if it's really happening. Yes. 
can you verbalize to us why? Because that was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. And that was a great sitcom audition. And not only was it so great, but you also took my note about letting me see more of who you are. All this shit happened that was so adorable and vulnerable and charming and funny. Now, we didn't get to that by you picking up new techniques or learning something. No, you let go of something. You dropped a something, a responsibility that your vulture was making you feel. What mm -hmm. was it that you let go of that allowed you to do that that's so easily and so well? Uh, I think I just, I, I just became me. And I well, think you're I, always you. I, I, you, know, you. You might feel like you're not you if your vulture is yeah, telling you. I think you I just let something. go of the scene. Ah, and, and, so you call it let go of the scene, but is what you mean by that is you let go of your responsibility to show what the scene will look like? Look like and I acted as if it was really happening. And okay, the definition of acting. acting. Exactly, and it was to Reggie, not to a character and everything, and it's, you know, it's what you say. It's, it's, Wouldn't you say that was easier? Course. And it was more fun, and okay. when you watch it, if you do, you're going to go, holy shit, why didn't I just do that the first time? Yeah. And it's because you let your vote, your vulture is as smart as you are. And he said things to you today that convinced you, even though you know, oh, I don't want to show what the scene will look like in the finished product. He still whispered little things to you that made you feel pressure and responsibility around the concept of character, around the concept of fulfilling the scene. Right. That made you, that kept you from behaving as if it's really happening. Yes. Yeah. Anything it's else you want to share? No, I, I think this is fantastic. Thanks for doing it again. Um, I think this is, you're amazing. And, you know, again, I've gone so, so much further with you and booked so many jobs and, you know, life is good. Yes, I'm so proud of all the wonderful stuff that's been happening. And I'm not surprised at all. You're doing great work. That was phenomenal. Thanks, Jack. We're going to keep it up. You better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, take care of yourself. All right, you too. I'll talk to you yes. soon. Yes. Um, so to every, everybody here today, beautiful, beautiful work, such great adjustments. Um, you know, the, the video will live here on my YouTube channel. Feel free to watch it. It's a great tool to be able to see how beautiful the scene became with no work on the scene, but instead we did the exercise to get your vulture to shut up. But again, I want to remind you that exercise really, all it does is get your vulture to shut up and the affirmations do that better. So I hope you're doing the affirmations all day whenever your vulture squawks, because if you wait till the audition, your vulture is going to be in charge. Um, all the money that we today went to the, um, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is where all the money went. Uh, so um, thank you guys so much because the, the, uh, the, the LGBT centers in LA and New York are doing so much good right now to help uh, homeless teens and, and people who are struggling. Um, also, anybody who's watching, I wanna say that I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy. And if you would like to um, read everything I teach, once again, can be read for free in my free ebook at this address. Uh, so if anything I said interested you or if you're a student in the workshop today and I talked about something that you want to hear more about, just go to the chapter on it because everything I teach is in there. And if you're somebody watching and you'd like to get involved and actually do a scene in this online workshop, you can write to me here at this email address to be added to the list. Um, and so that's it. Uh, I can see you guys, so I'm going to wave to you now. Goodbye, take care, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you out there in YouTube land. Bye-bye.